Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not Islam is violent and we are starting right now. With T-Jump's opening statement, thanks so much for being with us, T-Jump. The floor is all yours. Uh, hey guys, how's it going? So the question is, is Islam violent? Um, and in order to know if an ideology is violent, the best way is to look at the people who support the ideology. If we compare crime and violence of Islamic countries to crime and violence of secular countries, we clearly see that Islamic countries are far more violent than secular countries um, in many ways. For example, the number of teen pregnancy, uh, rape, uh, child marriage, uh, abuse of women, slavery, uh, all of these are significantly higher in Muslim countries uh, for some reason. And maybe it has nothing to do with Islam. Maybe it's just coincidence that the vast majority of world terrorism is committed by Muslims, just completely unrelated to their religious belief, even though they are literally citing their religious belief in every one of their actions. But it seems far more likely that we should just take these people at their word and they say that they're doing this in the name of Islam. Um, it doesn't really matter if our speakers like to interpret it differently. Like they have a different interpretation of the Quran. It doesn't make a difference because there's no way to show that their personal interpretation is any more valid than the interpretation of the terrorists. And so the terrorist interpretation, which leads to violence, is equally as valid as our opponent's interpretation. And so it is equally as likely to be a valid way to be a Muslim. And so, yes. Islam is absolutely violent. We can say it because Muslims who use the Quran as their justification act in violent ways based on the Quran. So yes, it's violent. That's all I need to say. You got it. We'll kick it over to Armin. Thanks so much, Armin. The floor is all yours. Who is also taking the yes position, namely arguing that Islam is violent. Thanks so much, Armin. The floor is all yours. Right. So just to clarify, we're talking about unjustified violence. And yes, based, um, Islam is uh, violent, but I I rather look at scripture to, ju uh, to judge a religion rather than the people. Like I consider Christianity to also be violent, even if Christians are not violent. The scripture is violent. And, um, you know, many, many people within the religions don't really follow their scriptures accurately. So I think going to the scripture itself to see what the religion teaches is the best way to, to judge whether religion is, um, has any, you know, whatever we want to say about it, like it's violent or not or anything else. That's the, that's the source. Okay. And when it comes to Islam, the main sources of scripture are, uh, Quran and Hadith. And there's a whole bunch of disagreements over Hadith and which Hadith, like, especially in modern times, even some um, hadiths that were considered very authentic for the past 1200 years have been like some modern reformists are trying to question that because they're just horrible uh, books. Um, so just to make it, keep it simple, I try to focus on the Quran because um, Muslims, do, they don't seem to have a disagreement over that at all. So if, if you just stick to the Quran, uh, rather than going to the hadith, there are plenty of examples in the Quran that shows that this is a religion that has a lot of uh, incitement to unjustified violence. And usually I, I could categorize it in four different, I don't know if I have time to read a couple of examples, but there are verses that direct Muslims to uh, kill the disbelievers. Uh, the I could discuss, discuss what how do they justify that and how do they say that it doesn't apply to today, that's the excuse for then. And there's also there uh, some direct uh, direction of violence towards um, Mushrikeen or direction of violence towards um, for certain actions that like corruption and corruption has not been defined uh, very clearly, which may opens the door to a lot of um, uses of the verses for, viol uh, for violence because it opens the door for any interpretation of what corruption really means. There's a lot of um, incitement to violence against women um, and also, if we include the afterlife, uh, the Quran is obsessed about uh, torturing disbelievers. So if you want to include uh, for the mere crime of not believing in Islam or in the Quran or Muhammad, um, it goes into a lot of gruesome detail about what's going to happen to um, people like me, I, especially people like me, because I'm an apostate. I used to be a Muslim and I left Islam. And the Quran is a very, very clear about what happens to people who don't believe in, uh, in, believe in a message, in the, in the message of Islam. Do I have time to read some examples? Examples of these uh, violent verses. Just a couple of minutes. Yep. Okay. So uh, one example is fight a fight against those who do not believe in Allah 
or in the last day and who who do not consider unlawful what Allah has, and his messengers have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth, which is Islam, from those who were given the scripture, fight until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. So that was one. Um, indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messengers and strive upon earth, uh, corruption is so this is the vague one, what it means by corruption, is none but that they are they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides or that they uh, be exiled from the land. That is for them a disgrace in this world. So, And then the next one is the wife beating one, which tells you that, you know, the last part of it is to strike, your, strike the woman, strike the woman who are being disobedient or you fear disobedience from them. There's two earlier steps for the last, Step if they're still disobedient. If you still fear disobedience, it says strike them. Uh, but if they obey, you could um, you could forgive them. So that's uh, Surah four, Ayah thirty four. And the last one I want to read about the hereafter, about the afterlife. It says, indeed, those who disbelieve in our verses, we will drive them into a, a fire. Every time their skins are roasted through, we will replace them with other skins so they may taste the punishment. Indeed, Allah is exalted uh, in might and wise. So these are just a couple of examples. I just want to say there are hundreds, hundreds of examples for each type of these types of violence that I mentioned in the Quran. And the Quran is extremely obsessive over what will happen to people like me uh, who do not, uh, who have left us, uh, who are don't believe in the message of Allah. And it, it can't, like anybody who reads the Quran cover to cover uh, would be very clear. It is almost extremely clear about the intentions of the message of the Quran. And so a lot of Muslims will argue that this is supposed to be some of these uh, verses are supposed to be for a specific time and a specific battle. But if you actually read the Quran, you could see that the main problem that Allah has with these people is their disbelief and that th these judgments applies to all disbelievers at all time. And it's not specifically for a certain time and a certain place. Anyways. You got it. We'll kick it over to our Muslim side. want to say, folks, if it's your first time here, welcome to Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we have many more juicy debates coming up. For example, at the bottom right of your screen, did dinosaurs live with man? That's coming up this next Thursday. You don't want to miss that debate as well as others, so hit that subscribe button. And with that, thanks so much, Perfect Dawa and Rashid. The floor is all yours for your open as well all right thank you uh, james for the opportunity so i will start that uh, is islam violent it depends uh, on which islam we talk about <clears throat> because there are two different islams one is a man-made islam based on fabricated hadiths and one is the true islam of quran <clears throat> the man-made islam of hadiths is violent and barbaric and, and as a muslim um the biggest enemy of that barbaric Islam, and I have been fighting it in 43 years. Muslims are the biggest victims of these barbarians like ISIS, Taliban, and Iranian fascist regime. On another side, the Islam of Quran is most merciful and forgiving, uh, that encourages me to be patient and forgiving. Quran chapter 42, verse 43, and whoever is patient and forgives, indeed, that is of the matters requiring determination. Chapter 23, verse 96. Oh, Muhammad, repel evil in the best manner. We are well aware of all that they say about you. Quran chapter 4, verse 135. Oh, believers, stand firm for justice as witness for Allah, uh, even if it is against yourself, your parents, or close relatives. Be they rich or poor, Allah is best to ensure their interest. Refrain from following your own desires so, so that you do not act unjustly. If you uh, conceal the truth, Allah is fully aware of what you do. <clears throat> Islam is not a passive religion and has a guidance for every situation. So when people are attacked by enemies, Islam gives them the right to fight back. But that permission is only in self-defense <clears throat> and only as long as, uh, sorry, uh, and only as the last option and as long as uh, they fight. Quran chapter 8, verse 61. And if they incline to peace, then incline to it uh, also and rely upon Allah. Indeed, it is he who is uh, the hearing, the knowing. 
uh, Quran chapter 2, verse 190, fight in the cause of Allah only against those who wage war against you, but do not exceed uh, the limits. Allah does not like uh, transgressors. <clears throat> there are many more verses of, uh, uh, of Quran to read, which uh, teaches us the same meaning of being merciful and forgiving. Um, another problem that uh, leads some Muslims to extreme ideas is misinterpretation of unspecific verses of Quran. For example, the word kafir in Quran has been translated as disbelief and almost all translation translated as disbelief, which is absolutely wrong. Quran chapter 16, verse 83. They recognize the favor of Allah, then they deny it. And most of them are kafir. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, most of disbelievers are kafir, not all. So if kaf, kuf is disbelieved, then all of them should be kafir. Kuf is rejecting Allah's commands, which is Quran chapter 16, verse 90. Indeed, Allah orders justice and doing good deeds and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and <clears throat> bad deeds and oppression. Uh, he admonishes you, uh, you, uh, uh, you that perhaps you, uh, you will be reminded. So rejecting these commands, uh, <clears throat> which is doing good deeds and giving to relatives and needy and taking care of orphans and uh, is kof, whether you believe in Allah subhanahu or not. Quran chapter 107, uh, verse 1 through verse 7. Have you seen the one who denies the religion? That is the one who repulses the orphan and does not encourage the feeding of the poor. So woe to those who pray, yet are not mindful of their prayer. <clears throat> those who only show off and refuse to give even the simplest aid. So according to Quran, those who pray but yet uh, repulse the orphans and, do, and don't feed the poor are the same as those disbelievers who do the same. Their prayers are just showing up. So a true Muslim is just the one who is merciful, forgiving, uh, being merciful, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, giving to relatives, needy, being just and taking care of the orphans and doing all other good deeds. Thank you. With that, we'll kick it over to Rashid. Thanks so much for being with uh, us. You're muted. muted. Thanks very much. We'll kick it over to Rashid. The floor is all yours for your opening as well. Yes, uh, thank you very much for hosting me today. Um, uh, as uh, uh, Muji also said, yes, I am in the agreement that uh, it depends very much on how you, uh, you see Islam. For example, I also believe that Islam is not a monolith. That it's not one specific thing that uh, there are definitely uh, certain violent aspects of Islam. But uh, of course, if we, are go if, we, if we want to get to the actual true uh, understanding of Islam, then we have to look at the scriptures, as uh, Amin also said, because those are what define the, the actual religion, if you like. And it depends on how people interpret it. So if people would interpret it in a negative way, and uh, then you could say that, okay, those people are have a, a violent understanding of that particular scripture or uh, of that particular ideology. But the ideology itself cannot be, it could be that the, the ideology itself is not violent, but people interpret it in that way. Uh, so I would go also here within the scripture itself and try to assess whether the scripture does in fact call to un, uh, uh, sorry, unjustified violence. So uh, specifically that kind of violence that is, as I said, unjustified. And I don't believe that it does, specifically if you look at the Quran and also several hadiths, I think that there is certain uh, contradictions between uh, some of the messages that do seep through from the hadiths. And uh, if you compare them with what the Quran is actually trying to tell you or the message of the Quran, and you have to look at it as an overall message. Uh, you can't just say is Islam violent, no. Uh, you have to look at it as a whole. For example, if you're looking at the scripture itself, uh, the Quran, you can't just take this verse says uh, this, so that means that the entire scripture is preaching violence. No, there are counter 
verses within the Quran that do call to goodness, that do call to nonviolent activities. So what do you do with those? Do you discard all those? Some people have decided to go that route where they say, oh, those ones were abrogated uh, by other verses, by the more violent verses. Uh, that is a route that I myself do not uphold, but they are allowed to do so. So for me, in short, I have to say that if we are to look at it from the scripture itself, uh, and we are because this is the scripture that every Muslim would agree that is from God, uh, then we I have to disagree there one hundred percent that no Islam is not going is not violent in that in that sense. Thank you. You got it. Thank you very much. And with that, we're going to kick into the open discussion mode. Want to let you know, folks, hey, if you enjoy debates like these, consider hitting that share button below and sharing it with someone else that enjoys debates like these, as we are striving to provide a fair platform so that everybody can make their case, whether it be Muslim, atheist, you name it. With that, we're going to jump into open conversation. Thank you very much to our guest. The floor is all yours. But can we just jump right in? How does this work? Yeah, yeah, you just jump right in. So, like, uh, why do you think your subjective interpretation of Islam is, which you think is nonviolent, is the correct one? Because it seems like the vast majority of Muslims don't agree with your subjective interpretation. So, why would God write a message that only you can interpret correctly and the vast majority of Muslims can't? All right. <clears throat> uh, if I would may, uh, answer that, um, I would like to say that um, it is... Um, God could uh, send, this is how God has uh, decided to send his message. God could send us uh, now a new messenger uh, with uh, splitting the moon every day so that everybody believe. But uh, we are not um, the one who should judge, uh, ask God why he did this, why he didn't do that. Okay, There are many things that you can ask God. All right. So the, the message is there. It is, uh, um, I believe that he uh, tries to, to test us, to test our intelligence as, as well. So it is up to us to understand the, for example, Armin said the uh, Quran says uh, disbelievers uh, uh, will be, um, what is it, will be punished in, in hereafter. And I uh, read for him verses of Quran that clearly says that um, it is not uh, disbelievers, it's kofar, and kofar has been misinterpreted, okay? And it is for any any rational person can understand that the, when the Quran says they recognize the favor of Allah, then they deny it. So it means disbelievers, okay? And it says, and most of them are kafir. So those who misinterpret it, or they don't take this, they don't look at it, they don't care about it, okay? So you, it's a, I'm talking to you, I'm not talking about those who misinterpret it. So you see yourself here, it's either contradiction or uh, this one, this verse clearly, and many other verses clearly tells us that these believers, uh, sorry, kufar right. are, are okay. those who, those who and said in chapter one. Can you let it? Can you answer shorter so we could get in as well? Yes. Because yes. if and, if we yes. ask a small question and then you go for a long a long yes. time, then it's going to be you yes. lecturing us and we just like asking you know. So like, let me jump in right now. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. So for, so first of all, um, you know, T jump is making a good point for uh, you know. There is lot. There are a lot of well-meaning Muslims, right, that are trying to look at the Quran and and try to come up with the most obvious interpretation of them, and a vast majority of them are coming out with conclusions that doesn't agree with yours. Okay, and are they going to be punished? for their lack of intelligence because like first of all if you're saying like oh you need to just be smart enough to understand that I, what i'm saying is true doesn't seem like a fair message like is like god judging people based on intelligent levels like that doesn't make any sense right uh but um you know the the, the, the part about the verse that you mentioned that you say this is in the quran it says uh kafir doesn't mean unbelievers technically true it basically means unbelievers are a subcategory of kafirs because kafirs are all the people that are ungrateful for what allah does like it believes himself could be a coffer because even though he believes in Allah, he is very ungrateful for his for everything he does. But an unbelie unbelievers are necessarily coffers because they don't even believe in God, so they are ungrateful. So it covers all the unbelievers, even if it doesn't necessarily mean that there are um that the coffer necessarily means ungrateful. Like the most if you read the Quran, um the most best explanation of what 
a coffer is supposed to represent is a person that sees the message, sees the signs of Allah, but he still doesn't, he's not very grateful to, to his message, right? This is this is this is the interpretation for the past uh, 1300 years, and this is what every tafsir, every um commentary on the Quran, every every um, of every scholar, Arab sp uh, speaking scholar has represented, and only in recent times when we have better moral standards in our society, uh, people who try to pretend like the Quran has better moral systems, they're coming out and reinterpreting the Quran, pretending like for that for 1300 years, the, all, the vast majority of every single person that had looked at the Quran and tried to interpret it has got it wrong. And only recently, Mushtaba has come and is enlightening us that you know, 1,200 years or 1,300 years worth of scholarly work has all been wrong. If the if, if your God cannot come up with a book that is is clear enough for people for this for all these people to get wrong, either he's basically either he's promoting unjustified violence or he's just extremely poor at communicating. Okay, for you to be able to get that and all these Muslims getting it wrong. Okay, another um, another thing that is like when you're saying. Um, there's justice in the Quran. The justice that the Quran is advocating for is justice for Muslims. It's a just is a Islamic version of justice, and also the peace that is the Quran is advocating is a peace where the enemies of Islam are humiliated and they're humbled and they submit to Muslims. That's the peace that is um, that is um, advocating for, and also a peace when. Every all religion in the world is Islam, okay. And, then um, and also the verse the same, that I read to you when it now, says that just one second, just the same thing. Okay, go. I can give you another ten seconds, yeah. but just good to point. Keep it good moving, point. Yeah. This is also a long response. Yeah. Yes. You're right. All right. Let, let me. Uh, maybe uh, Rashid would like to respond, or uh, or else I will respond. Rashid, would you respond, or shall I respond? Oh, I would like to say just uh, if, if you see yes. one thing, one one simple thing, on uh, your own in that that is yet just your own interpretation. If we are limiting it to this particular question that we have on the debate today, is Islam violent? If uh, as uh, uh, what's his name, T T John, T John, T John. T. Jams, okay. Uh, as he was, as he was saying that, uh, why is it that uh, we have to agree with your interpretation if there are many interpretations out there which disagree from yours? I would say that if we are limiting it to this particular question that we have today, if you were to go around and ask the majority of Muslims, "Is Islam violent?" I am sure that the majority of them would say no. What so is if, violence? If, no, if if the, because you were saying before that okay, we have to look at the people. That's what you opened with in your opening statement. You say that we have to look what, at what people. Believe. What is what, violence? Let me get to that. I said that you said we have to look at the people. So if I, if we are going with your understanding of how of whether Islam is violent or not, and we went around and asked people, is Islam violent? Then the majority of them would say no. I if don't you don't care what they think, what they think doesn't matter. What is violence? But. But then that's just going against your own question. Your, your no, own, uh, no, your own... no. What their personal interpretation of if they think yeah. Islam is violent doesn't matter if they're murdering people. If they're murdering lots of people and they think they're being no, peaceful, the it doesn't matter what they think. So tell me what is violence? Okay, uh, yeah, Tijam, uh, you, you take just uh, some example in uh, Muslim countries uh, that has the root, it has uh, to do with politics. You take that one, for example, you don't take uh, North Korea, you don't take, uh, uh, you know, Marxism or Adolf Hitler. Who yes, they're also working. violent. Those are also yes, violent. They're so also, I include those so, two. So, so what again? So, so, what? so it doesn't have, so it is not about, it's not about that the scripture, as Armin said, we have to go to the scripture, not pe what people do. For example, for example, I can give you, Armin can uh, can say it right now, okay? Ar Armin can, can uh, what is it, uh, confirm it right now. For example, there was a terrorist, Iranian terrorist was uh, uh, captured 2018 in uh, Belgium. He was going to blow up uh, me and my family and many other Iranian in Paris. He got 20 years. I don't, in I don't care. No, no, I'm just going to tell you now belgium is going to release him because of i don't some, care because of some oil you know some oil so i don't you, care yes yeah, so you don't what care is so when, violence yeah when you bring it up okay so it, what that point, yeah killing violence people, 
killing innocent people, that's violent. But that doesn't have anything to do with the scripture, okay? Why, why people do that? That's because of, you know, some interest they have. They can use their language. They can use their race. They can use color. They can use like everything. religion? Like religion, they can use as well. Yes, they can use. They so can like people be, leaving the religion, being killed for leaving the religion. Those are, they're innocent. Yes. That's absolutely wrong. We do not agree with that. There is nothing uh, in Quran that say that you have the right to kill, uh, for example, um, Armin just because he doesn't believe in something. There is, if you give me a single verse in Quran that says that Armin should be killed because of that, okay, then I leave Islam. There is no such Okay, thing. I have a verse. I have a verse. Okay, can you give me the verse? Yes, please. Yeah, it's um, Surah Toba, uh, verse 29, okay? okay. And this one... Yeah doesn't mm-hmm. mention kafir. This one mentions specifically the people who don't believe, okay? okay? So it says, fight against those who do not believe in Allah, okay? okay. And I already mm-hmm. read the rest to you. Mm-hmm. The Arabic version is doesn't mention the kafir. It says, قَاتَلُوا lazina la yu'minuna. So do those, this specifically translates mm-hmm. to those who do not believe. بَلْ Allah وَلْ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخَرِ So in Allah, or the hereafter, and it goes on, okay? okay? So I think your excuse for this is going to be that this was specifically talking about a war at the time of Muhammad and the okay. and the people who didn't believe at the time of Muhammad. Is that okay. your excuse for this? Because no, I have a response to that. No, no, no. The, the, if you continue, okay, later Allah says, fight as long as they fight, okay? Okay. Rabbi Rashid, yeah. uh, no, right? until they give the jizya. It doesn't uh, say until they fight, until they okay. give the jizya. Okay. So it says like basically, basically we're saying it says fight them until okay. they submit to you and they pay you money. So okay. if, they, if they're giving you the tax, if you're div- if they're paying for the fact that they're not Muslim, that's when yeah. you stop fighting them. That's what the okay. verse is. No, no. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, Armin, ISIS and Taliban, they take also one verse and say this is all. Okay. When you put this verse, beside, re- I, no, look. I have. Put, no, I have. You, wait, wait. I say when you put this verse beside other verses that say uh, Allah does uh, does not forbid you from those who do not fight you and do not expel you. Chapter uh, I think is chapter sixty, verse eight. Okay, Allah does not forbid you from those. It doesn't say. Uh, Muslims, those who do not fight you and do not, uh, uh, Brother Rashid, can you please, uh, because I haven't memorized it. Definitely. It tells you that if you, if they submit to you, basically the message no, no, of the no, Quran. No. It, doesn't, if, it yeah. doesn't say. It doesn't it say. Does. Uh, okay, let me bring it for you. Uh, Brother Rashid, maybe you um, have, have it in your mind, I'll, until, I'll, otherwise I will bring it for him. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do have it in my mind. Yes, okay, let me let me read it for you. Uh, chapter 60, verse 8. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your Wait, home. Wait, what, 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 tell me, tell me the Quran, Surah and verse, what chapter, chapter? Chapter 60, verse 8, okay? Allah mm-hmm. does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from, from your, uh, from your home, homes, from being righteous towards them and act, acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Allah only Allah only, this is the next one, forbids you from those who fight you because of religion and yes. expel you from your home. You know, this is a Meccan. It is, there is no Meccan. This is a Meccan. No, this is, the, if you read the tafsir, if you read, so it's, a, it, sorry, what? It's not, not a Meccan surah. No, okay. So, yeah, if you actually read the tafsir on this one, this is specifically yeah. about the people, Mohajirin and the people that they came to Medina, right? And about their families and stuff like that, right? So it's very interesting that when the, we have specific Quranic verses telling you that you shouldn't befriend people who do, who are not Muslims, people who have a different religion, and you also have re- verses that tells you the lakum dina kum din. So to everybody, there's own religion. Everybody could have their own religion. And it's very interesting because when we point to the verses, so all of these verses exist, okay? There are verses that teach you that, okay, like let people have their religion. And also tells you there are verses that tell you to kill people of other religions, okay? These, both of these verses exist in the Quran. But when we, when you point to the verses um, that are 
sound peaceful, you do not want to take it in context because when you take it in context, it makes it makes you and the time and what what Muhammad was going through when it receives those verses, it, it shows that he was being strategic, he was being political. But when we point to the verses that are problematic, then all of a sudden you're like want to be like, hey, look at the context. And the interesting thing is that whenever you claim that we should put it in the context, you don't actually take the effort to put it in context because when we put it in context, it actually makes it a lot worse. So what about the verse that before without jumping to another verse what about let's say for okay let me submit this to you okay let's say there are verses in the quran that are very peaceful that encourage muslims to befriend people of other religion what what does that erase all the verses that i'm showing you that shows that the quran is encouraging you to kill unbelievers you didn't acknowledge the verse that i just read you how do you justify okay let's, let, let me tell you let me tell you i mean first of all you have to how do you that, justify the verse that i just okay. read you it tells you to me, kill the okay. people who don't believe in allah i, I tell you that chapter 3 verse 7 says that uh, unspecific verses uh, the true interpretation of unspecific verses of quran is known by allah and those firm in knowledge what fear those firm in knowledge do then they why do you Okay, then why do you, you give me verses? Then what? Then me, the, if you if you're telling me, okay, if you're telling me that I cannot I, I cannot give you a clear verse that kills you tells you that you have to kill the unbelievers, you're telling me like, okay, there, this is a has a hidden message. Then you cannot no, give no, me no, peaceful. Then you cannot give me peaceful verses and tell me that this is that. A, has a peaceful message. Uh, Armin, Armin, I didn't say that. I I'll said you, you are not firm in knowledge, so you cannot understand it. People of firm in knowledge can understand it. How they understand oh my God. it? How they understand it? They put it beside other verses of Quran. I, okay, wait, wait. I did. Okay, they put beside other verses of Quran that they and they understand it. Like for example, when Prophet Muhammad. Wait, upon, make uh, okay. Wait. You do this for me. You do this for me. Okay, do, please do this for me. Okay, put this yeah. Quranic verse that I just gave you. Put okay. it in the required context for us and tell us how this is verse is justified. The verse that specifically is saying "Qatilu al ya ya." kill those who do not believe in Allah in what context this verse is justified okay uh, brother Rashid you want to respond uh, otherwise I can respond and um, you go ahead then I will respond All right, after okay, okay. Uh, look uh, um, uh, army so when you see that all these verses, when you see that Prophet Muhammad, when he, uh, what is it, when he uh, make the, the peace agreement with the pagans and with the, with the uh, Jews, he said that uh, now we are a united Ummah. And from that moment, these verses are abrogated. From that moment, not a single Muslim has the right to go and kill the pagans and the, the, the what is it, the Jews, okay? And that peace, even the order came that even if they provoke you, you have no right to, to respond, okay? So these verses are as long as they fight you. Quran says it in many, many verses that you fight them as long as that verse is as long as they fight you when they stop fighting you stop fighting too because allah does not like those who transgress okay so you don't understand tell, that's such a that, okay let me put that verse then next if you want to put verses next to each other then i'm going to tell you based on this other verse that i'm going to read you it tells you that the moment that you have to stop fighting is the moment when all religion are for allah all religion or islam it says fight against them until there is no fitna, until their religion is of Allah, for Allah. That's okay. when you see this is Quran chapter eight, verse thirty-nine. So you tell you're telling me that the Quran teaches you that when that battle uh, okay. is over, that's right. abrogated, and for now okay. we don't have to kill the unbelievers anymore. Okay. This verse says that you have to continue fighting no, until uh, every okay. religion is Islam. I, I told you, no a chance to respond, uh, yes. perfect Awa or Rashid, but then I want to go yeah. over to T Jump just to get him involved yes. as well. Yes. After not uh, yes, not a single verse of Quran say kill unbeliever. I told you, I did. I read to you. Yeah, okay, this doesn't say kafir. It says mu'minuna ba Allah. Don't believe in Allah. It specifically says don't believe in Allah. Uh, okay, when you put it beside other verses of Quran that there is no compulsion in religion, okay? And I just read another the, verse that tells you yeah, that okay. continue fighting until mm -hmm. everything is Islam. I just put you, I just put it right next to another verse for you. Uh, uh, it's Surah okay. 8, okay. verse 39. 
All right. So, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Armin. So, when Prophet Muhammad peace upon him wrote that agreement with the with the um, Mushrikun or Kofar or whatever you call them, okay, and he said, "Now we are a united Ummah." Okay, am I right, uh, Brother Rashid, or not? He said that now we are a united Ummah, and he ordered his uh, followers that you do not fight them, fight them, you, even if you they provoke you. Okay, so they had no right to go and kill them or uh, you know, to do anything, even when he um, uh, how occupied. Do you, when he, how do you know uh, that was that was his? How do you know that that was not his order? First of all, now you're taking stuff that is outside of the Quran. This is part of the Rivayat. How do you yes. know that that commandment from Muhammad was not specifically for that specific place and that specific time? Because you have Muhammad making a commandment to Muslims mm -hmm. for that specific time and say like, hey, don't stop right now. Don't fight anymore. But you have the Quran telling you to fight until every religion is Islam. Okay. Uh, look, uh, fighting is not always uh, by sword. I'm now. It fighting. says God. Okay. It says kill yeah. them. It says God hello. Yeah. It says God hello. God means God hello. Allazina, kill them. Uh, uh, Brother Rashid, would you like to to respond, please? Yes, um, I mean, um, looking at that verse, for example, it is specifically, of course, uh, targeted towards the people of the book. Would you agree to that? No, it says "Qatilu al-lazina la yu'minuna ba Allah." That yeah, includes but, me, but read, read not the, people of the book. Read, I am not okay. Read okay, so, yeah, okay, okay. So let me read the English. Fight against those people, uh, those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day, and not or not uh, also, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah ha and His messengers uh, have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth. Uh, which is Islam from uh, from those who were given the scripture. Okay, fight so until they who, give the jizya. Who, okay, who who is he talking about? Is he talking about the, the regular people or the people of the book? Uh, the people of the book includes the Jews and the Christians and also Muslims who are you know who left Islam because I have been also given the book. Well, not entirely, uh, but uh, I am. I oh. no specifically says people who have been given the scripture. I used to be Muslim. Yeah. So I also have been given the scripture. Well, that's a, that's a bit of a stretch that you would take it that far. But okay, fine. Let, Thank you for not including me. Let's no, say no, it's just no, telling I, you to kill the Christian. Oh, okay. So okay, sure. It's, 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 it's not bad. It just tells you to kill Christians and Jews. You're not allowing gotcha. me to. Speak. You're not oh, allowing okay. me to. Speak. No, you asked me. A, no, no, sorry, sorry, Rashid. I wasn't mean. To, I was trying I was to you asked me. You asked me a question, so I tried to respond. But go on. I said I was I was saying that it's not talking about that uh, what okay. you're saying about people leaving the deen or about people leaving religion. It's specifically talking about the relationship that was going on between the Muslims at the time or the Prophet at the time and the Christians and the Jews who or the people who are uh, who are from Ahl al Kitab. Now, if I ask, for example, as you've also read, it says that uh, those who Alladina la yu'minuna billahi wa na min akhir. So I am asking you, do you know of any Christian or Jew? who does not uphold these things, those two things? Yeah, but Allah? Yeah, like who doesn't yeah. believe in God on the last day? From the people uh, of the book. Allah is specifically, okay, so you're oh. you're really stretching here. You're no, really no, stretching here. Stretching this, is, this is Islam, this is Islam. <laughs> you're <laughs> really stretching here. I you're am really asking, stretching I'm asking a simple question. The verse says, fight those who do not have you're Iman saying this is a. You're saying okay. So you're saying this is an empty verse that does not. Oh, it's no, not I'm addressing not, anybody that exists. I'm not saying it's empty. You, again, you are, you, are my, you, are, you are concluding from my statements. Okay. Okay. You're no, telling me that this verse. Are you? Are you I'm asking a question. I'm asking you a question. Okay. Are you telling me that this verse is referring to no nobody because a Christian basically the way? I, okay. Who is it referring to? Who are we supposed to kill? <laughs> yeah, I said that. Okay, this verse is particularly targeted towards a group from uh, the, the of uh, the book. Okay, so in order to understand what it's actually read talking about, you need to understand the relationship between the prophet and also the Ahl al Kitab. Okay, Who, who's the Rasul? Who's the Rasul in this verse? Ani, you asked. Let me respond, please. Okay, go on. Okay, thank you. Um, you have to look at the relationship that was going on between. The prophet and also uh, Aladina. Which prophet? That's what I'm asking. Which prophet? The prophet Muhammad. Let's assume Muhammad. that he's the one, let's assume that is the one who received the scripture. Let's go with that okay. as well. So okay. this verse is 
particularly talking about the, the relationship between the prophet and okay. the people who are considered alavina uh, who who were given the scripture so you have okay. to look at the relationship that was what was the, what led to this first for example was there something that uh, unjustified or justified this first okay so okay. look at the, and how was the relationship between muhammad and yes. the Christians and I the Jews. understand your point. I can I can make your point faster. You're saying that this was specifically about a group of people and justified this response. Okay, that's what your point is, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, but there, there's a few problems with what you're saying. This is why I'm kind of I was rushing trying to get that. First of all, it says people who do not believe in his messenger. Specifically, this messenger means uh, Muhammad, right? So Christians and Jewish Jewish people today, this will cover them, right? So no, no, anybody, no, look, but no, look, but it's, also, it's, also, it's, also, also, if you say that this was for Tom to give uh, just uh, any sort of response, I was just going to answer Rashid's question, but okay. let me, let me know, tell you, I've, I've said it many times yeah. ago, so I do yes. want to, at some point, it's yes. good to just kind of keep it fresh and yeah. have everybody. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me tell you, let, 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 let Tom yes. respond because okay. um, James said Tom should talk. Yeah. Uh, did uh, Muhammad behead 600 700 people after they surrendered yes no, but Mushaba probably no, no, no definitely not no so you're saying that's just all the no, muslims who believe that are yes, just wrong yes, that's a historical no mistake. no i don't say no i don't say i i, I just say that uh, these are uh, fabricated stories that have been uh, because uh, first of all when so you the look vast at the, majority of muslim historians are just wrong the, a lot of them, okay? A lot of them. I don't know how many of them say that, but... The uh, vast majority. Okay. The, this uh, this is uh, controversial because this is... Uh, even the source, uh, some says that... Well, I some have more say, questions. Yeah, let I me have... say... No, 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 no. Let me say... Some say 600, some say 700, some say 900. I don't some care about that, the number. Some, no, no. That, how no, many, Mishra? No, no, some says, first of all, and then some says they were what killed. What number do you say? Some says in this... I don't, what, what number do you one, say? Oh, my God. There is no such a number, I said. They, so they you say not, zero. You say it's zero. They were not killed uh, the way they, they 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 say. Okay, they were they, they were they were battles. Okay, in the battles, people get killed. But uh, in Quran, uh, you have no right to kill the prisoners of war. Okay, those who uh, become prisoners, uh, Quran specifically says that keep them until the the war lay down. Or you can ransom them, and and we know that. Let me uh, read. Wait, 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 wait. So, so you're saying that Muhammad never ever killed a prisoner of war, ever? No, never, ever. Uh, because uh, in That's the true. battle of yes, in the battle of Badr, for example, when he saw his soldiers have tied enemies' hands and draw them, he became angry with them, and he said, "Open their hands, uh, treat them well." Give them your food equally with them, and each uh, prisoners who teach ten Muslim reading and writing go free. And this is exactly according Quran. Mm. Let, me, let me respond. Well, well that's magic. So, so you're talking about here is magic because literally okay. any war that has prisoners, many of the prisoners die. It's like in all okay. history, especially all back right. then. So, so what you're saying is magic. He, he magicked okay. them and didn't kill them like every other war that's ever happened in all of history. Okay. And you're rejecting the vast majority of historians, because, both secular yeah. and Jewish and Christian and Muslim who just look into history and confirm these things. They're all wrong. Yeah. Didn't happen. And, because and magic. It, okay, okay, let me tell you. Because it but wait, wait, against, I don't, I don't, that's fine. That's fine. It I, goes I more against questions. Quran. More it goes against Quran. Okay. That's nice. That's nice. So did Muhammad order the torturing of the Canaan guy? Canaan. I don't know. The, he, the guy he, who, who the, the, yeah, the guy that uh, drank the camel's urine and they, they sold the sheep and then he of course guy. not. Of course not. So also a fiction. It's completely no, made up. I, History no, of Muhammad is all wrong. Didn't no, no, happen. No. Look, look, look. I tell you that anything goes against. I said it before uh, we start. I said to Army, anything goes against Quran is fabricated. Prophet the Muhammad Quran goes against the Quran. No, no. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, we are talking about Quran, okay? And Quran no. says, look, and Quran uh, uh, discourages such a things. Quran absolutely. The Quran has verses that encourages certain things and then it discourages in some other places and then it advocates okay. as completely in direct opposition. Okay. And you guys came up and say, oh, where, it abrogates where, the other one. Where, like where, like yeah. there is no consistency in the Quran. Okay. Where it says that you have the right to torture people in Quran. For example, um, let, let, but, okay, let me first go this one. And where then does it say it doesn't? Where does it yeah, say? Okay, uh, hold okay. on. 
Okay, let, let, let first we go this I, uh, this verse about Christian that like, you mentioned, okay, and then we go about that torture, okay? Quran, you said about Christian, Quran chapter 2, verse 62, those who believe and those who are Jews and Christians and Sabians, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and do righteous good deeds shall have their rewards with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Chapter 3, verse 113. Not all of them are alike of the people of this, the book, are uh, a portion that stand firm, uh, uh, sorry, for the right. They uh, rehearse the, the verses of God and all about, light, it, okay, long. So, so, so no. It, so says, now, it says, okay, Quran 551 says, all you who believe do not take Jews and Christians as allies. They are um, they are in fact allies of one another, and whoever is an ally uh, to them among you, then indeed he is one of them. Indeed, Allah guides not the wrongdoing people. It like you say like oh befriend like there are so many pro Jewish and Christian verses. This verse very specifically tells Muslims to do not befriend um, Jews okay. and Christians. Let me read for you chapter three verse seven. It is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad. Okay, Mashaba, I wait, agree. Wait, those wait, verses. Wait. Those no, verses, no, no. Okay, let, let me let me agree with you. Let me agree with you. Okay, there are verses in the Quran that tells Muslims that hey, be peaceful, don't kill anybody, and befriend Christians and Jews. Okay, those verses do do not erase the verses that I'm reading you that tells you to literally do the opposite. Okay. Okay. Let me let me read for you, please. One second. It's just a few seconds. Okay. Uh, it says the uh, the sent you the book. In it, there are verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book and other unspecific. As for those whose heart is, uh, you know, uh, corrupted, like ISIS, Taliban, and unfortunately, I, I don't want to call you, but you, you also do the same. They will follow that of it, which is unspecific. Like they say, oh, here, this verse say, uh, kill Jews or uh, I don't know, uh, things that they don't take uh, Jews. And so look. What about the wife? Okay, let's talk about, yeah, yeah. what about the wife beating verse? That's the most clear one in the Quran. The one that tells you to beat your wife. How do you explain that one? It never says beat your wife. It says leave. Okay, let me. Let oh me my read. God, are you let serious? Okay, I'm very serious. Okay, um, let me read for you. Uh, uh, Armin, do you know which uh, which word is uh, used? Um, Azra bahuna. Azra bahuna. Okay, uh, let me let me read for you. Okay, uh, strike. Okay, okay. Here, uh, Armin, strike has been used in Quran in many many I verses. Know. Quran chapter 43 verse 5 says, uh, strike is ignored. Shall we utterly ignore you because you are uh, one fault? Okay. Uh, chapter 4 verse 101, strike is trouble. Chapter 18 verse 11, strike What's is that about? You should. Okay. So, so wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I told you, I told you, this is, uh, uh, these are, these verses are mushabihat uh, in Quran. When you put it beside other verses, you get the true meaning of it. So uh, in that chapter, uh, sorry, in that Mishaba, verse, every every single every single Arabic scholar has translated that as no. Yazra Bahuna. Let no, me no, let okay. me just tell you, okay. every single Arabic scholar has translated Yazra Bahuna as to strike your wife. Okay, okay. The, uh, the the only people then there are a couple of modern New Ages Muslims who are for the first time after thirteen hundred years are translating this word into leaving okay but i i have something to read to you okay uh, what yeah. you're saying uh, i'm reading this from the book the atheist muslims by by ali rizvi okay it says to anybody who is actually familiar with the arabic language will tell you that these new in new age interpreters couldn't be more wrong and you don't even need to know Arabic to understand it. Why? Take a look at the word hit in the following phrases. Hit the road, hit hit the lights, hit the goal, um, hit the bottle, hit me up, hit up a bar, hit the woman. Okay? So, for example, even though hit means different things in these phrases, for anybody who speaks English, it's very clear that hit the woman in the last one means to strike the woman. Or, for example, strike a deal, strike a balance, strike up a conversation, go on a strike, strike a woman. Okay, to anybody who understands English, they know strike in those other examples means something else. But anybody who knows English knows strike a woman in the last one means to hit a woman. Anybody, any Arab speaking person that reads that Quranic verse would tell you that this clearly, clearly doesn't mean those other meanings of Yaz Yazra Bahuna. It means to strike a woman. It's absolutely 
I mean, you're not being dishonest, but people who know Arabic, if they're telling you that it means something else, they're being oh, expl- right. uh, they're being dishonest about what this word means. Okay. It's okay. clearly about wife beating. There are oh, even right. hadiths specifically referring to this Quranic verse, clarifying that this is about beating your wife. But go on. Okay. Uh, first of all, I have the Persian uh, translation as well. It say leave them. Okay. And then secondly, uh, secondly, those who uh, say that it is beating wife, uh, they don't, uh, you know, think rationally because. If Allah was for beating wife, people have been beating their wives throughout the history, okay? So Allah didn't need to send uh, a verse and say, oh, uh, you know, uh, believers, hit your wife. I'm hitting my wife, uh, you know, and then you tell me, hit your wife. So people would say, uh, oh, Allah, what, what are you talking about? Or, or Prophet Muhammad, I'm hitting my wife. So why you are going to tell me? But we see that Allah says that first do this, second do that, okay? So already as a husband, already as a Shabba, husband, I'm looking at 17 translations. Okay. I'm looking okay. at 17 translations. Literally none of them talks about leaving your, your wife. All of them t- are talking about either hitting okay. your wife or striking your wife. 17 different translations. Okay. Uh, none of have, them translated okay. the way okay. you're translating. Okay. They have even they have even translated Nashu's as uh, obedience, okay, which is absolutely wrong. Okay, Do you me... know that for 1400 years, nobody translated this or interpreted this as anything other than hitting your wife. This is okay. a new phenomenon for people who are trying to make okay. excuses. For okay, let me tell you, yeah. let me tell you, let me tell you why they haven't done it because uh, 1400 years ago, people or in 1400 years, people didn't have the opportunity that we have today. We are educated today. We read, we, we uh, you know. This is a very unaccessible okay. Quran. If yes. the Quran makes, if, yeah. if people, if the Quran was sent for only the educated elites and you have to have, be a scholar to understand yeah. what it means, the Quran itself has a verse saying that this Quran is a clear message for everybody, not for an educated elite that understand like uh, uh, Arabic scholars. Okay, so... Uh, Quran chapter 3, 30 verse 21, and among his sign is this, that he created you uh, mates from among yourself, that you may uh, well in uh, tranquility with them, and he has put love and mercy between you, verily in that. There are many, many verses that Quran talk about love between uh, yes. let, let, let me uh, this, for example, this Nashus uh, that they have also translated. Um, uh, let me uh, find it. Um, the, even even Nashus they have translated as uh, disobedience. Uh, okay, chapter four, oh. verse one. Wait, wait. wait. Chapter two, four, four, verse one hundred twenty-eight. This Nashus says, "If a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband, this is Nashus." In that chapter, chapter four, verse thirty-four, they say obedience but here they change it to, to fear indifference okay how come okay how come here? because the quran is a mess okay how the quran right, you, you act answer. like you're acting like the quran cannot okay oh. you acting like you're saying like it says here over this how come it says over this over here you're acting like the quran cannot okay, okay. if you believe in allah maybe the quran cannot contradict itself but for oh. us mere for atheists we agree that the quran is a man-made book okay. so it's able to contradict itself here let me read oh. this Quran 1452 says, this is a clear message, this meaning the Quran, for humankind, okay, for okay, humankind, yeah. a clear yeah. message. So when you say like after 1400 years, nobody got it, only us realize today that the, what the message is, the Quran itself cl- claims that this is a message for everybody, like a goat herder should, should be able to read the Quran and understand the message of Allah. If he can't, then the, the God has failed in um, sending a message, like he, he has, he has, he, okay, let me tell you this. It's true. Allah, the Quran, might be a nonviolent book, but if it is a nonviolent book, it's the most poorly communicated book I've ever read. Okay, but I, 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 got a, I got another question. Why I um, understand it, but you don't understand. That's Egypt. your problem. That's I, got, your... I got another question. So, yes, in Quran, verse 424, 23, 1 through 6, did uh, Muhammad give rights to his soldiers to rape the women slaves who were married? Right hand position. It's the right hand position. Is that the one? Do you want to read it? You go ahead. You can read it. Oh, which one is it? Uh, Quran 424, uh, 23, 1 through 6, 33, 50, 70, 22 through 30. I think it's the right hand position. 
Want to remind you in the meantime, folks, our guests are linked in the description. So that includes Perfect Dawa, T Jump, and Armin. If you'd like to learn more about their views, you certainly can by clicking on their links below. That includes if you're listening to the Modern Day Debate podcast. All of our debates end up on the podcast where you can find our guest links in the description box there as well. Mm. So Quran uh, 423 says, uh, prohibit, prohibited to you for marriage are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your father's sisters, your mother's sisters, your brother's daughters, your sister's daughters, uh, your milk mothers who nursed you, your sisters through nursing, your wives' mothers, and your stepdaughters under your guardianship um, of your wives unto whom you have uh, gone in. But, it, but if you have not gone in unto them, there is no sin upon you. And also prohibited are the wives of your son who are from your own loins, okay? Uh, okay, and that you take in marriage two sisters simult simultaneously, except for what has already occurred. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. I think maybe the next verse covers the uh, concubines that you could capture. Um, also uh, are prohibited to you are married women, except, oh, there you go. So married women, except those your right hand possesses. Okay, so it's telling you, the Quran is telling you that you cannot have sex with married women unless, unless you capture that married woman in war. Brother Rashid, um, I, as I know, uh, maybe you know better, Brother Rashid, because as I know, it is, uh, um, you have to marry them. You cannot, uh, you know, have sex with them, rape them. In, in Islam, it's forbidden to, to have sex. You have to marry them, okay? And it has to be, uh, am I right, Brother Rashid? Please, uh, you, uh, you concerned. can't marry an already married woman in Islam. That makes no sense. Uh, Brother Rashid. Uh, I, have an answer. I think that uh, this whole thing is just a shouting match. I mean, to be honest, um, it's just, I mean, we're saying something, you're saying you don't care. So it's kind of difficult for us to answer. You know, because our answers are very detailed. They have to be detailed, unfortunately, because the, this is these are important, you know, issues that you're bringing up, obviously. So it's going to take us a bit of a time. What's break. the answer? Did did Muhammad say no. that you can have sex with other married women no. if they're your slaves in war? No. How how when when Armin just literally read this? Yeah, but where did does he read it wrong? See, you're you're throwing a word rape. You see, yes. does he did he read rape in the verse? Well, if you capture a woman in war, technically what Quran says, what Islam, I agree with you that Islam says that you could marry them, but the definition uh, of marriage in Islam does not require the consent of the woman. It doesn't, the Quran, the concept of consent in the in, as Quran is completely missing. Uh, there is no mention of anything regarding the consent of the woman. So yes, uh, technically you do as, whatever you require Islamically to be considered married to the person, but I, I can't like, for example, uh, Muhammad had sex with a woman who he just earlier killed her brother, her father and her husband. OK, um, technically, before having sex with her, technically he married her. But there was no um, imagining that a woman who just had her husband, brother and father married would have not consent to a man having sex with her. So we defined as sex without consent. We define that as rape. Yeah, and I would disagree so, with the, that 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 took place, or that the Quran calls for marriage out without consent. Aisha, for example, your marriage. So, for example, Muhammad married Aisha, okay, at age six, and then he consummated that marriage at eight nine. Would you I not would consider that, that that was a marriage? But we consider I, that I, also rape. Yeah, I disagree. I disagree at all. That uh, does Rashid agree? Uh, Rashid, do you agree that that happened? No. So you, Rashid, you're you're saying Sahih Bukhari is wrong. Sahih yeah. Bukhari. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know much about. I know you don't agree, but Rashid, you you're questioning Sahih Bukhari. Yes, I would disagree that that particular incident is correct. I would disagree. Okay, no. So Sahih Bukhari is that an authentic source of hadith or no? Not every hadith in Sahih Bukhari is authentic, and even if it were, uh, according to the scholars, when it comes to hadith, if a hadith is Sahih. That does not necessarily mean that the prophet did it. You need to understand that. 
when a yeah, hadith I, I understand that because I agree that Sahih, Sahih Bukhari sometimes refers to things includes includes hadith that wants to clarify that this is something I gathered but it's not something that I put my stamp of approval on. I agree with that. This is not one of them. This hadith has been mentioned multiple times in both Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, and they all point to the same thing. Muhammad yeah. married Aisha when she was six and had sex with her when she was nine. There's nothing. Um, if you want to, if you want to throw this out, literally nothing about Islam will become uh, recognizable because the source that tells you this tells you how to do Hajj, tells you how to do the prayer, tell you no, how no, to do no, fasting. No, did, no, no, no. We did it. I said no. that particular hadith is no. not something that I agree to. It doesn't mean that I, if I say that uh, there's a hadith that is not authentic in Bukhari, that I'm throwing out the entire book. You guys exactly. know you're inventing exactly. your own new modern Islam. This is like Rashid no, no, and Mushtaba no, Islam. No, 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 no. Armin, 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 let me tell you. I disagree that Prophet Muhammad split the moon because Quran uh, says opposite, okay? And uh, Bukhari says that uh, Prophet Muhammad split the moon, but it doesn't mean that I say Hajj is uh, wrong. Literally, or, like you're yes. the first Muslim I have ever heard that thinks, um, you think Muhammad didn't split the moon? Of course not, because uh, shall, shall okay, I read? Okay, your Islam, no, okay. No, no, no. But, okay, no, Mushaba, you're correct. No, no, you're right. Okay, other Muslims are wrong. Okay, this okay. is the worst religion ever. That you that uh, that is a religion that you are the only one who managed to get it right. Not and only the one. Ninety nine point nine nine percent of Muslims yeah. have got it wrong. No, I'm not so the only one. even I mean, if no, I'm not saying you're the only lie. one, but I'm not the only you're one. few. Okay, it's a really bad yes. religion that this okay. this minority, this fringe minority, can get it right. It's a really okay. poorly communicated religion. I'm very very, very uh, Quran says. Uh, I think that you are misrepresenting us. We didn't say that they were wrong. That is something that you are saying. We didn't say that all people, Muslims have I'm, been wrong. They have been careful or they've gone astray. No, you are saying. The vast majority of Muslims disagree with your interpretations of Islam. So okay. if, Islam, if what you're saying about Islam is true, it's the most poorly communicated message sent by any deity ever to his followers. Okay, But you are saying that. We are not. You see, I know I, you're not saying that, but that's what the conclusion okay. is from what you're saying. That's what it comes from. Okay, let, let, let's, let's, let's take that example that you pulled up, you know, uh, about Aisha being at the edge of that or being at the edge of... There are multiple scholars today who have disputed that hadith. And by the way, uh, you saying that, oh, you don't believe... Do you agree that, that this is the please, fringe minority? Please, please. Let, me, let me explain okay. something. Okay, you are not giving me any moments whatsoever. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm saying that, look, okay, just because a hadith is in Bukhari, that doesn't mean that it did happen or that it's authentic. Right. You, okay. you, okay. This is not something that I am saying. This is very popular. Even you can take Salafi shiurs who have classified hadiths within Bukhari as I said that. I no, said you, that. You, you asked me if I was throwing away Bukhari, didn't you? No, but then you said not everything in Sahih Bukhari means that Bukhari puts a sample of approval. And yes. then I and responded, then you, I said, this is not nobody. one of those. And then you said, this nobody is, nobody has ever seen it that way. Okay. You guys are the only one. But come on. You didn't, I, you didn't you pay that. attention to what I, I said. This I part, no. okay. I did. Sahih Bukhari has certain hadiths that he's like, these are not correct. Okay. I'm collecting anyway. For my collection purposes, but there are certain had say there are certain part of Bukhari collections that everybody recognized as him putting his stamp of approval on it. That's this is one I'm of them. Saying. This is okay, one let, of those. Can That's I can I say something? Right. Can I say something? Can I say something? Uh, uh, Armin, Armin, if uh, that's your problem and their problem, then Quran. Uh, from chapter seven, verse one hundred six to one hundred nine, talk about uh, 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 one small miracle of uh, Prophet Moses that he threw a, a stick and became snake. Okay, he uh, explained it uh, very very clearly. And then chapter seven, one hundred fifteen to one hundred twenty five, the same thing. All this and chapter twenty verse. What are you 7, asking me? No, I'm asking you. When Quran is talking about a simple. A miracle through this uh, stick become snake. Why Quran in a single verse doesn't say? I agree with you. Muhammad. I said no, no. You, why? I agree it... with you. You're right, and everybody else is wrong. No, I agree so, with you. Yes. Okay. Exactly. You're, so, you're, so yeah, you, so you, got you got the right one. You got yes, the right Islam. Exactly. All, so the, what, all the vast majority of Muslims got the wrong one. Okay. When, they, when, when, you Quran, when Quran doesn't say a single word that Prophet Muhammad split the yeah. moon, and you say, "Oh, everybody else say that," no. why you don't know? So. 
I, I, I don't understand why they don't look at this Quran and say, my God, so why Quran doesn't say a single yeah. word about such a great miracle and talking about this little miracle so much, exaggerating it even, okay? So you mm -hmm. understand that sh people should think about... Do you know the their, reason? That's do you know the reason? Not my problem. Do, you know, like, the actual, do you want to know the actual reason? Yes. Because Islam was building upon Judaism, okay? Mm -hmm. Judaism was already a, a whole bunch of stories that already existed. The details were already available. The stories mm -hmm. that about Muhammad's miracles were just being added on top. But because Muhammad and people at that time had access to a whole bunch of literature explaining Moses' miracles, then the Quran had didn't have to come up with a lot of stories. Those were already readily available. You could just like st steal a story and add it to the book. That's why the, that's the reason why you see a lot more a lot of information about Jesus' miracles or maybe Moses' miracle, especially Moses, because Muhammad originally was building Islam based on Judaism, right? And you don't see much about Muhammad. Okay. Okay, uh, that's uh, your, uh, I don't know, understanding. I know, but I'm saying there's alternative, uh, yeah. even if I'm wrong, that there are okay. alternative explanations. Let me tell you, let me tell you. The, the but you were, no, do you understand, do you understand okay. that how you were pretending that your conclusion is the only viable conclusion, not and I just give you an alternative? I just said again, mm -hmm. not, I'm not the only one, Brother Rashid, there are many others uh, who understand. And I didn't say that, I mean, that's something you are throwing on doesn't me. Exhaust it doesn't exhaust all the possibilities, does it? Okay, let me tell you, it's about uh, Islam is violent or not. You mentioned chapter 5, verse 33. You said that the recompense of those who fight uh, uh, Allah and his messenger and seek to make corruption in the land is that they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from alternate sides or that they be uh, banished from the land. That is their um, disgrace. Yeah, crucifying. Yeah. Okay, crucifying, yeah. So, crucifying, cutting the hands okay, and feet, okay, yes. alternative so, sides. Uh, Armin, can you tell me where in, in this verse said that, oh, Muslims, crucify them, those who do this and that, crucify them or cut off their hands and feet. Let me read for you. That's the problem. That this is the penalty. Okay. It says that no, should be their penalty. No, no. no. Look. It's, it is a passive form. Then chapter 7, verse 124, Pharaoh says, I will certainly cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides, then crucify you all. Chapter 20, verse uh, 71, he, Pharaoh said, have you believed in him before taking my permission? He is surely your great one has uh, taught you magic. So I will cut off your hands and feet from alternate sides, and I will okay. crucify you on the trunks of the palm tree, and I will do that, 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 okay? So this is what Frau and pagans used to do. Allah doesn't ask me to follow what they do. It is what happened to them if they do not follow Allah. It's like, it's like that uh, in Christianity, say you live by sword, you die by sword. Okay, this is a passive form. Okay, it is not a, it is not an order to me that I crucify. So passively, you. the Quranic verse, the passively. Okay, let's say yours right. Okay, the Quranic verse passively it says that the penalty for people who go against Allah. Okay, yes. people <clears throat> technically me. Okay, because a lot of my activism is like against Allah. Okay, mm -hmm. and it says spread or spread corruption upon the uh, uh, land, most of the right? Which is again technically me because that's what it's describing, like people who spread that's corruption, like people. Look, but, but, I mean, you guys. It, it goes against. But, let, you said goes against. It doesn't say goes against. Does it say goes against? Wage wage war against Yahrabuna Allah. Yes. Wage war wage against Allah. War. You said go against. It says okay. wage war, but you wage said. War. Wage war against Allah. Yeah. Yes. Take, okay. I'm waging right. war against Allah. Okay. Yes, that, but, but, go but against. Martin, yes, but okay. Martin. I inter okay. Go, okay, go, go against I, is less violent than wage war. So he, he actually gave you a charitable interpretation there. Go against is, is not oh. as bad as wage war. Okay. Against. Look at sure. Sure. But, uh, I accept. I accept waging war against Allah. Because you can't like form an army against Allah. Okay. So you army. wage war against Allah. Well, hold on. Let me see. L let me let me continue. Most of the falar, people who are spreading corruption. It says the penalty for these people should be that they are crucified, or or the hands and the feet are cut off, and they're crucified. You're saying you're saying that I should read this, and I'm going to agree with you as no. Hey, Muslims, don't go do it yourselves. This will just happen to them. Okay, 
I will take care of it. Dear Muslims, who don't care, think who like... Care of that? Okay. No, who take care of that? Your in, what's your interpretation? What's your interpretation of this? My interpretation, I told you that this is what Pharaoh and pagans do to uh, to each other. We know that it says. Were... What are you talking about? It says like uh, it, it, it doesn't say that form. anywhere. It's a passive. Form. It doesn't say Martin, that just because I, it's passive, yeah, it doesn't mean yeah. that it's telling you that pagans will do this to each other. Okay. It's telling you anybody, the people who are spreading corruption in the land, their penalty should be that they're crucified. You're adding stuff to it. You no, understand that you're adding stuff no, to it. No, no, it's, it didn't say that the penalty is that we uh, Muslims should crucify them. It says that Pharaoh does oh the same thing. So you mean that? Okay, okay. Let, so, me, so, let okay. me give you an let example. You. If I no. say, if I say the penalty for for being a Muslim, okay, is okay. that they're going to be crucified. Okay. If I came out and said that, let's say, let's say I was, let's say I was a war general. Okay. okay. And came out to tell people like the penalty for Muslims is the cutting of hand and feet and crucifixion. Okay. Okay. okay? okay. And I say that in a passive form. Okay. okay. You're like, Muslims are like, what the hell? This guy is a right. main, like, this man is anti-Muslim. Okay. But you were like, no, he didn't specifically tell you to go cut the hands and feet of Muslims and crucify them. He just said, this is their penalty. And he probably meant that Muslims are just doing that to each other. Like, well, he didn't say that. You're just trying to sugarcoat it by adding your own stuff to it, which is not in the goddamn verse. Okay. Let me now give you a good example. If I say that if you use drug, okay. If you use drug, you get uh, diseases, you get cancer, you get this and that, okay? And the penalty, the, the, the result is that, okay? And it says, continue, it says, and hereafter, Allah will punish them, okay? So, and it says that, uh, for example, I'm the government, and say, and after you get caught, we will punish you. So, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that, uh, okay, sure. Do it doesn't do mean that. Let's say, I'm going to agree with you. I'm agree. If you're Allah, let's say you're Allah. Let's say me and you are Allah, okay? okay. Okay, <clears throat> let's say I wanted, I put down this verse and I didn't mean for Muslims to go crucify people for spreading corruption in the land. Okay, <laughs> okay. wouldn't you as a law, as an all knowing law, think like, hey, if I tell people that the penalty should be crucifixion, some people might actually look at this and it think like, hey, say, I wish to crucify people. It didn't, okay, it didn't say like, should wouldn't be. you, like, okay, it didn't say should wouldn't be. you, it that the penalty is that the, the, is, the penalty that. is okay, the yeah, penalty but, for people is. is crucifixion. Okay, yeah. is that not an irresponsible, an Allah who didn't mean the thing that yeah. I think that this means, and literally people have thought what it means for like the past 1300 years, think that have the same interpretation as me. Arabic, Arabic speaking scholars had the same interpretation as me. Let's say they're all wrong and you're correct. Wouldn't a responsible Allah think like, okay. maybe I should be mm -hmm. more clear about what I mean here so people don't come with this interpretation. Okay. Uh, uh, this is, the, I said that this is their problem that they don't read the Quran. Let me tell, ask you, did Pharaoh do this to people and who follows uh, this uh, this Pharaoh was uh, following Allah's command or Allah is uh, was following uh, Pharaoh's command? Can you tell me, please? I, I don't understand because Pharaoh was doing this. Okay, they the pagans were crucifying each other. Quran says in those verses that this is what Pharaoh does. Okay, he chop off their hands on alternate side and yep. then he crucified people. So was Pharaoh following the command of Allah or Allah uh, followed the you command of Allah? You talk to us as if we think Allah is real and he, Allah would not okay, follow so, other so, people's oh, tradition. Okay, as okay. people as people who don't believe in Allah, right. we think that the Quran okay. covers a whole bunch of other traditions. So, so, so for this us, is that's happening. not a contradiction. Yeah, so so this, is, this is the problem that you uh, you don't understand it and then you say when uh, it comes here... No, we say, just don't believe that don't there's believe an Allah that, okay. that wouldn't so when, follow so, other people's so, traditions. So when you don't believe, don't tell me that this says that we have to do it okay i'm telling Wait, you i can't i I'm cannot tell you, you what the text seems like it's no. saying because i don't believe in a law okay so like because, I, no because i i read for you that those whose heart is corrupted they followed the unspecific verses of quran and interpreted the way they want okay those whose heart is corrupted so maybe your heart is corrupted. you're not doing that maybe your your heart is corrupt. if my okay. heart is corrupted well, I, I, you follow okay, you, true you follow. okay i the Quran, do you agree that the Quran also says that people who just believe their heart is corrupted and I allotted that to them and you should like not even bother with them? Didn't the Quran say that? The Quran doesn't say that. The, doesn't the, the Quran say that those who just believe their heart has been corrupted by me not, and there's. 
Okay. And law it's specifically not, takes credit for corrupting my heart, doesn't it? It's, it's not about everyone, okay? It's about uh, certain people, even in, in uh, about Christians. And doesn't the Quran says that certain people, his heart, their heart has been corrupted by Allah himself, and don't you spend, waste your time with them, and that he's going to punish them in hell for eternity for their, corrupt, for their corruption. How is that fair, by the way? For Allah to corrupt the heart of people, and then he punishing them for not... For not having any hope in coming to Islam, like does that make any sense? Do you, do you well, agree that that verse exists? The verse that Quran that Allah says to Muslims that do not try to bring people that I have corrupted to Islam. They are a lost cause, and their destination would be hell. How is that fair? Um, this, if I want to say my own opinion, okay, this is uh, the way um, God Allah was talking to people of the past, okay, <clears throat> and. Um, the, this is not uh, exactly the way uh, he has done it. This is my own understanding, okay, that do not, because some people's heart is really corrupted and it's uh, almost No, he doesn't impossible. say it's corrupted, it's, it says um, I corrupted uh, their hearts. Yes, okay. Uh, their heart is like that. I say that this is uh, my understanding is that uh, it is not exactly how you uh, understand, you, you, you look at it, okay? Brother Rashid, do you have anything to say about it? <clears throat> um, um. About the corruption, no, of the heart, okay. no, not about. I would like to stick to the topic, though. Yes. Okay, yes. Tom. Do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah. So it seems like their argument is is that if they cherry pick all of the nice things and ignore all of the bad things, then Islam is peaceful, and that seems like their personal interpretation. That essentially zero point zero 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 something percent of Muslims in the world <clears throat> believe. And it seems delusional to think that their personal interpretation that so few Muslims actually believe is the true Islam. So it's irrational to think that Islam is peaceful. It's more rational to think that the vast majority of other Muslims probably have it right. So just based on probability, most likely it's not peaceful. But I'm ready to go to the Q&A because I think we've I'm not really interested in personal subjective interpretations of a book that no one would- really agrees with. Before we go that, I would like to say that, okay, before, before we go that, uh, you don't have to, if you really think that those are uh, Quran, you don't have to, you don't need to follow them, okay? You follow those uh, good commands of Allah, okay? Uh, like those verses that I read for you about, uh, you know, giving to orphans, uh, to needy, and so on, okay? So you follow the, uh, the commands that you understand that. For example, uh, well, let me uh, read for you uh, chapter 4, verse 135. Oh, believers, stand firm for justice and witness for Allah, even if it is against yourself, uh, your parents or uh, close relatives and so on. There are uh, many others. Chapter 23, verse 96. Repel evil in the best manner. We are well, uh, well aware about what they are saying about you. Chapter two, 42, verse 43. And whoever is patient and forgives, indeed, that is uh, uh, of the matters uh, requiring det- uh, determination. So uh, as a Muslim, I tell you that if you don't understand those verses that you think that these are violent and so don't follow them, that's great, okay? So because I do, I understand that the, uh, these verses are not promoting violence and I just encourage you to follow these verses that you see uh, that they are good, they are uh, commanding okay. you to do right. Things, That's a okay? horrible idea. That's horrible. Okay. Like if the Mein Kampf had a, a section of it that said, like, hey, by the way, be nice to orphans. I wouldn't no, tell people. Say, like, it doesn't say. Well, it doesn't say. It doesn't let say. Let me just finish. It doesn't say. Let's say. Let's say, okay. let's say the Mein Kampf have once one added paragraph at the very end. Uh, like, by the way, take care of orphans. Okay. I wouldn't tell people like, hey, this book. You might think be, uh, that the rest of it is wrong, but hey. um this last part is good, so follow the Mein Kampf, follow the good parts of the Mein Kampf. Ignore the bad parts of Mein Kampf, but follow the good parts. That uh, is a really horrible um, legitimization of Mein Kampf, okay? If I have enough uh, logical understanding and a good moral guideline that I could recognize the good or bad parts of the Quran, that means that I don't need the Quran because I have enough, I'm sensible enough to know what's good and what's bad. Like that, I don't need the authority of the Quran. But by referring to the Quran, uh, and like in the parts that like I already know it's good, like yeah, taking care of orphans is good. But by referring to the Quran, I'm giving authority and legitimacy to a book that comes with a whole bunch of other horrible ideas. It comes as a package, okay? So I don't want to do that. I don't want to give it that 
legitimacy. So you mean, um, I just, so you mean, so you mean that you will not uh, take care of orphans? You will not uh, give to needy? Okay, because Quran says that. Will you not do did that? Did I say that? What the hell? Okay, did I so say? you will do that. So you will do that. Yes, you will do that. Not because would, Quran says. So that, that's yeah. why. But okay. I will also say, don't fall for the Quran's lo- like. Don't look at the p- small little. These are the sugar. This is a poison. The Quran is a poison pill. Okay, it has a sugar coating. It's a few v- <clears throat> sweet little verses here and there that makes it sound sweet and butterly and you know and like like lovey dovey kumbaya stuff. But if you they, but they use that sugar coating as a way to make you swallow the entire thing. And when you swallow the entire thing, you realize that you just swallowed poison. Okay, so don't fall for that. That's just the sugar. In fact, the sugar coating makes it more dangerous okay because just like mein Kampf, if it like mein Kampf doesn't have that sugar coating so it's easier for people to be like okay this is a horrible book but the quran is a more dangerous mm. virus because of the sugar coating that the good parts of the so-called good parts of the quran makes the quran a more dangerous book because it comes with a lot of horrible ideas but people are picking and choosing and trying to portray to you as if this is a good book by just showing you that it's sugary stuff but it changed me to a better person okay <clears throat> i That's, I have, I have, I believe in you, Mushtaba. I think you would be a good person even without the Quran. Okay, I have more. I have, I believe in you more than more yourself. Okay, I think, I think you would. You're a wonderful person, and if I take the Quran away from you, you will still be a wonderful person. <laughs> no, I, I became much better actually. I have to tell you, <clears throat> because be, before I was believing in death penalty, but I don't believe in death penalty anymore because. I learned that we have no right to because of the Quran. <laughs> yes, sure. yes, because okay, because I, okay, yeah, because sure. I, yeah, you yes, keep the I, Quran. You keep the Quran for the vast majority of the people. The Quran has a toxic effect on them. Okay, but Mushtaba, you just keep the Quran. Okay, but for most people, right. I don't <clears> recommend. <throat> All right, <clears throat> let's, let's go Q and A because I'm I'm bored. We're gonna jump yeah. into the Q and A. I want to my final uh, thing. Huh? Uh, sure. Nice. Final, final, final words. Final point Conclusion. Also. Yes. Yes. You got thank it. you. Um, I, I think that. Uh, The Quran is fairly easy to understand. Also, as uh, Amin was saying, was also saying that it should be understood by even a Bedouin picking it up and understand. I believe that the Quran is written in a vernacular. It's not written like in some upper level of Arabic. No, it's written in a language that all people should be able to understand. The issue comes in when we do not interpret the Quran according to the Quran, because the Quran itself says that we have given you the best. Tafsir. So the Quran is the best explanation of its own self. So in order for you to understand the Quran, you have to uh, understand the process in which it was revealed. You have to understand the relationship that was going on at the time, which I do believe can be found within the Quran itself. I am not asking people to go and look for other materials outside the Quran. No, you can look into the scripture itself and itself will tell you how the situation was during the time of the prophet. You need to understand the political climate of the time. For example, you need to understand how kingdoms were ruled, uh, uh, how societies was ruled at the time, how situations were at the time, how people were warring from one clan to another. You need to understand these things, for example, in order to be able to put the Quran where it belongs. And then you'd be able to understand it in a much better way. So the Quran within itself contains parts which explain other parts. So you need to be able to look at those parts and then uh, assess whether, for example, it follows the narrative, whether it follows uh, the other parts of the Quran. And that's the part, the point of the Quran. And another thing that I also want to make uh, that the Quran is not meant to, uh, like, for example, alter the humanity that is within the human being. And that's the problem that sometimes we, uh, we assume that we come to the Quran and we expect the Quran to make us good. But no, the Quran is taking it as a given that, for example, that you apply your humanity, your own understanding. So if, for example, I am a violent individual within me, I will gravitate towards the violent aspects that are found within the Quran. That's a, that can happen, no doubt. And also, if, it, if I am easily malleable if, I, malleable, if I'm easily moldable by people, for example, I will easily gravitate to other uh, people's, uh, people's understandings and people's uh, uh, ideologies and all that. It's, it's easy to, it's easily manipulated. That's, that, that's the point of ideologies, that there is, you can easily shape them in any way that you want in order to trick people. And the Quran is no different. But we treat the Quran as if it is supposed to be like, or, 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 like it's not. It's supposed to add some kind of okay. uh, you know, special thing. But okay, Rashid, 
like that. Actually, the problem is that the people people claim that when we show the horrible parts of the Quran, and then some Muslims come and like, hey, if you actually took this in context, um, and you also uh, understood the political comic of time, this would make actually a lot more sense, and it would be not as horrible as it seems. Like right? the pro- and the problem is that they they rely on the audience just taking that on face value and then not doing that because when we when we actually do that it becomes worse okay so you like mo- most people are like oh this muslim is telling us that hey actually it's actually nice and peaceful and lovey-dovey if you don't do the work but when you do the work it's the peaceful lovey-dovey we'll parts away. that all go away and the horrible parts become actually 10 times more horrible. Right, let's, we'll let's go with closing from, let's from move on. I mean, if you guys want to do closing <laughs> okay, statements, it. it looks like we're going back into dialogue now. Otherwise, I, I want to yeah, give yeah. it to okay. Perfect Dawa and then T-Jump before we go into the last questions. Well, we're, I already did mine. That was yeah, my did, previous statement. You got it. Perfect Dawa, any last in 60 seconds? Uh, not uh, upset much. So I just uh, say very fast after this, I go live on my channel and those who would like to ask me questions from audience, they can uh, join my channel and ask me. I will be live right after here. I can barely hear you. But okay, with that, we're going to go into the q and want to say, folks, if you happen to have a question, type it into the YouTube live chat at Modern Day Debate with at Modern Day Debate. Otherwise, if you do a super chat, we read those first. Here we go. Pineapple Platymus, thank you very much, says, Does Islam have a version of, quote, turn the other cheek, unquote, when someone hits you, such as like what Jesus said? Why did Jesus not promote self-defense? Uh, I, I have, don't uh, believe that uh, such a thing exists in Quran. Uh, Islam says that you have the right to defend yourself. Of course, as I said at the beginning, it is as the last option, not the first option. You have to try all other options. And if there is no any other way, then uh, you have the right to uh, defend yourself. And uh, that's the uh, Quran encourages us in many uh, places that fight against oppressors. Okay. So, Brother Rashid, if you would like to respond. Or... Yes, um, yes, as uh, Muji also said, that uh, the Islam is not a pacifist, a pacifist religion. It's not a pacifist. It's not pacifist. Uh, it's, uh, it has verses within it that legitimize, like, for example, fighting against people in self-defense. That's the only place that I would say that it legitimizes it. Go, becoming vi- or, or waging war or going to war or something. It's in self-defense. However, when it comes to uh, how you do it, even within that uh, particular compound, it still has verses within it that uh, tell you how to act during those uh, horrible times. For example, when it says, that you're supposed to repel something that is evil with something that is good. And why is that? Then it would be that the, the, then the person w- between you and whom there is enmity, that that person will become to you like, uh, uh, Wali Yun Hamim as the most trusted, confident, a very good and near friend to you. That is the moral of the Quran. You are supposed to repel evil with good. Uh, Quran's definition of evil, which is not our definition of evil, because I am evil based on the Quran. Okay. Well, also, also, yeah, the Quran's definition of evil. Like when, whenever you say like people promote you go like, oh look, the Quran says it's against evil. Yeah, like a lot of wholesome things are considered evil by the Quran. <laughs> so I don't think that's a very valid point. Uh, but also, if I want to answer the question, um, you know, as the story of Muhammad and the story of Jesus are similar in so many senses because both, they were both religious uh, rebels, like the people who rebelled against religious, the religious authority. Their stories uh, are religious authorities at the time. Jesus' story um, ends with him being crucified. Uh, Mos- uh, Muhammad's story is him becoming it becomes victorious and starts a government. So naturally, uh, the stories that come out of Jesus' religion are less aggressive than the one the re- religious le- rebel that managed to become successful and set up a government so it would make sense why one of them has more violence in it than the other one this one coming in from horatio c says salutations from romania i just want to thank you james for making this amazing channel and doing such a good job with it thank you for your kind words horatio c all credit to the speakers who are linked in the description right now so if you want to hear and learn more about their views folks you certainly can by clicking on their links below he said, it's the subscription that I always look forward to most on YouTube. Well, thanks so much. And passing all that credit to the speakers as they are the lifeblood of the channel and linked in the description box of the podcast as well. Kyrie Irving says, was Muhammad's marriage to Aisha justified within Islam? 
I think we uh, answered that question. <laughs> we said that uh, that never happened. If no. Would, okay. We said we said that uh, it never happened. It's that, not just that that uh, nine years uh, or uh, six years old. If you would like, I can read the 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 story that she was nineteen or twenty one at the time. If you would like, I can. But it uh, it take a little bit time. Okay. So I can read it more accurate that uh, historical that when. She was born when she was um, she moved here, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you have time to to uh, I read for you that. Just 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 read the source, and I will read my source for why she was nine when Muhammad had sex with her, because this is my source. This is Sahih Bukhari, recognized by uh, uh, the vast majority of Muslims. Okay, as yeah, authentic uh, yeah. Um, Okay, yeah. Just um, give us the source. You don't yeah, need to yeah. read it. No, it is uh, uh, from different historical and hadiths is taken the, the, the timing, okay? What? For example, that she, her sister was 10 years older when she died and so on. And then the calculation become that uh, she was, uh, uh, what is it, 21, so, to, yeah. 19 or 21. Mujtaba, you realize what you're doing, okay? So what's happening is that the Muslims who want to act like her age was higher, they take a weird ass calculations out of multiple hadiths that none of them are referring to her age specifically, but they're trying to come up with a calculation that shows her as old, but they ignore the literal hadith that all the hadiths that mention her age at the time of the consummation of marriage, they're ignoring that one, but they okay. want to do like a detective work and like, oh, like she was here at this time and they were at that time. And when she said, when she, this was narrated, her age was this, and she was not playing with the doll here and she was playing with the doll here. And all of this all of a sudden okay. works to all number right, now, of 19. Now, now uh, let me, uh, they ask, uh, I think us, okay. Uh, birth date of uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad's uh, 571 AD. Islam introduced when uh, he was 40 years old. Uh, 611, Prophet uh, preached Islam in Mecca 13 years. 40 plus 13 equal 53. Migration from Mecca to Medina in 624. Uh, Asma bin uh, uh, Abi Bakr, date of birth 595. Date, uh, sorry, death uh, 692. Mecca, Saudi Arabia. She died at uh, the age of uh, 97 years. Uh, the historian Ibn Khatir uh, and Ibn Askir cite uh, a tradition that Asma was 10 years older than Aisha. Let include, uh, calculate now. Asma, uh, elder sister of Aisha, born in 595 AC, and Aisha born 10 years later uh, in 605. Islam revealed in 611. It means okay. Aisha was six years old at the introduction of Islam. Prophet uh, lived in Mecca 13 years, hence Aisha was 13 plus 6, 19 years Give us old. Give a conclusion. At the time. So the, the migrate took place in Mecca after two years of oh uh, migration. 19 plus 2 equal 21. So okay. this let me read now. This okay, okay. Me, you, are going to, okay. you are going to read a, one story that she was uh, six years old. That's that's a no, story, no that's Sahih yeah. Bukhari. That's the most authentic um, source of I, Islamic I, hadith I, in the whole. Like, and yeah, it's yeah. Mo multiple ver times in Sahih Bukhari and multiple times in Sahih Muslim. Let me read. You read yours. Let me read I mine. Know. Okay. Let me let me you let me read. I know you know. Yeah, let me read it for the audience. Mushtaba, yeah. I know you know. Let me read it for the audience. Okay. Yeah. This is Sahih al Bukhari, fifty one thirty four, book sixty seven, hadith seventy. Okay. It yeah. says. The, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, there's, you like that, married her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old. Hisham mm -hmm. said, I have been informed that Aisha remained with the Prophet for nine years, okay? So she, well, Aisha was 18 when the Prophet died, okay? There are multiple versions of this hadith. Yes. If you want to question Sahih Bukhari, you have to literally get rid of 95% of Islam because mm -hmm. Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari is how Muslims know how to do the Hajj, how to do the Salat, how to okay, do the fasting, how to do yeah. everything, okay? But My, I was answering it, the question yes, that was asked. We went again back to the same, uh, you know, thing that we were saying that we don't reject everything, okay? We reject those that, uh, you know, are just... You uh, don't like. Uh, no, 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 like. no, 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 not, not, <laughs> that, not that. Those who, those that are not accurate, okay? And uh, 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 what is it? Rashid as well said that not all of them 
even uh, themselves. You pick uh, and choose, I understand. No, even even uh, all scholars uh, uh, say that not all of the hadiths there are uh, authentic. This one they approve. Yeah. This is one. This is in the, one of those books. Okay. That um, this one. Yeah. For me, for my uh, my answer, my response uh, for me to that is that I don't accept that particular hadith or those uh, things based on the Quran because the Quran for it for marriage in order for marriage to be uh, to be valid uh, between a, a woman and a woman there needs to be roshid as that is a requirement of the Quran there needs to be a, a person who is who has reached an age of. Uh, not true. The Quran. Uh, Rashid, I want to you're, give you're them not the last that, word, and then we've got to go to the next one because we have so many questions. That's not true. The Quran says he can marry children. This the Quran says he can marry children. No, it doesn't. Okay, this one it doesn't. Says, from Aaron Johnson says, for both, please read Quran 4735, which I've got right here. I can read it for you. It says, so be not faint hearted and do not cry for peace. You shall prevail. Allah is with you and will not bring your works to naught. Uh, I didn't understand very well. Uh, Brother Rashid, you understood? Yeah, yeah, I know. I understood what you mean. If you talk about the verse that says, Wala tahinu wala tahzanu wa antumul a'la wa la wala tadi'u ila silmi wa antumul a'la is the don't call towards uh, which people translated as uh, as peace, but uh, that actually means more submission. I don't know why he said peace, to be honest, why it says peace. It says silm. That's Pretty much submission. It says don't call. It shares the same root it. as peace. As Salama mm-hmm. has the same root as peace. Though. Yeah, but that word silim with the with the, with, with the kasra and uh, it doesn't actually mean peace. Uh, it means more submission. So mm-hmm. it don't call towards being submitted. You know, while you have the upper hand. So okay, uh, next, next one, next super chat. By the way, can I just say Mushtaba and Rashid are better, are good people? This is why they don't accept Islam. Like, I don't want to, I'm not attacking Mushtaba and Rashid. I'm attacking I Islam. Islam. Yeah. They are, they are, I think, they are I good. think their they're... interpretation of Islam is probably the best interpretation of Islam that there is. Yeah. <laughs> this is coming in from, do appreciate your question. XXWLZXX says, you can't pick and choose which hadiths you want to follow. It's either Sahih and authentic or it's not. Otherwise, you can pick and choose all you want. Okay, uh, I can respond to that. Even um, Bukhari that you say uh, is um, yeah, authentic and so on, he uh, collected, as he said, 600,000 hadiths. And as he said, which I don't believe at all, that he memorized 300,000 fabricated hadiths. How can he memorize all these hadiths? That's another question. And he threw away all of them. He just kept 7,000 of them. And I do not accept just because he said these are authentic, I do not accept. I have to look up Quran and see if it contradicts Quran because I am the one who must answer uh, God uh, in the judgment day. If I follow Bukhari and say, oh, this hadith that says kill apostate, apostate, and I go kill Armin, I am the one who must answer God, not uh, Bukhari. Okay, he answered, of course, for himself, but for not for me, okay? Because then Allah says that I never told you in Quran that you can go and kill people uh, just because of their beliefs, okay? Just, I have said it many times, that fight those who fight you, okay? And uh, those um, army is just fighting me with words, and I'm fighting him with words. That's all, okay? So I ch- I, I can choose hadiths because I am the one who responds, but I don't pick up and choose from Quran and all, everyone agree that there are hundreds of thousands of fabricated hadiths, everyone agreed in that, okay? Yes, please. Yes, and uh, as for as for my opinion on that is that even if you look at all hadiths that were particularly selected, selected by people choosing so when Bukhari, for example, classified as a hadith as being sahih or authentic, he classified them according to his own terms. So he set the terms, the different criteria that are required for a hadith to pass as sahih according to his own. That's why, for example, you have hadiths which Bukhari rejected, rejected and called uh, called fabricated, but sahih Muslim considered them authentic. This one coming so in from he, Ronald Mendonca says, <laughs> see how much peace religion brings? I don't know if they just mean because you guys are disagreeing in debate or if they mean something else. Hey, we don't, we don't, we're not fighting. We're just disagreeing. By the way, this is a very good point to bring up here. Okay. Um, we are like, I am a very much a, a anti-Islam, 
but I'm very much pro-Muslim, okay? I am, the, the, the problem that we have is just this agreement over ideology. Like, we don't, I don't, we, we want the best for each other. I like Rashid, I like Mushtaba as, as people. I just disagree with their ideology. In the same way that a Muslim could be very much anti-atheism because they love atheists, because they've been like, hey, atheists are going to go to hell. That's what, and I love atheists. I don't want to go to hell, so I'm anti-atheism. So you could be anti-atheism without being anti-atheist. Uh, in the same way, I'm anti-Islam without being anti-Muslim. So this is not a, I, I hope like Rashid and Mushtaba consider, like, could consider, like, me friend even though they disagree with me would you guys be able to consider me a friend even though we passionately disagree with each other of course yes. yeah. definitely yeah. we are we are we are we are, we are, we are human beings and uh, we disagree uh, on things and we are not uh, uh, enemies as long as we uh, dis- uh, talk okay and we don't attack each other that's uh, that's great okay so yeah. yeah and then and then i have to tell you that According to me, you are not going to hell just because you are, you, you are a disbeliever, okay? This one coming in from... Well, thank you. Appreciate your question. XXWLZ XX says, why, re- why reject the Hadiths when the Quran itself was compiled in the same way as the Hadiths? Also, 90% of Islam is in the Hadith. Without it, it's pointless. Okay, we... we yes, uh, Brother Rashid, yeah, because if, I think we answered that, Okay. Yeah, um, uh, the, uh, to that question, no, uh, the Quran was not compiled in the same way as the Hadith. You can look at all the history books that you want. The Quran was never compli- compiled in the same way as Hadiths were, if you look at the history even outside it. And if you, someone ag- disagrees with me, if I mean you disagree with that, that the Quran was compiled in the same way as Hadiths, you are allowed to make that claim, but then I would need to see your sources, please. This one coming up. Well, I mean... A okay. follow-up question. They say Allah destines people for hell, and they say Quran seven, verse one seventy nine. Uh, uh, do because I have to read the verse. Okay, uh, brother, I should do. Do you I have can, that? I can read yeah. it out loud if you'd like. Yes, please. They said, "Quote and certainly we have created for hell many of the jinn and mankind. They have hearts with which they fail to understand, and they have eyes with which they fail to see, and they have ears." with which they fail to hear. They are like cattle, indeed, even more astray. Such are utterly heedless. <clears throat> okay, if I would like to, if I answer that when I say that, again, you cannot take one verse of Quran and say that's all, okay? Uh, it is um, always about oppressors, okay? Those who do bad deeds. And Allah even says that <clears throat> if you avoid um, major bad deeds, I forgive your minor bad deeds, okay? So Allah is just, uh, I read for you that Allah only um, uh, invites you to do good deeds, all right? As long as you do good deeds, uh, you are fine. Uh, Brother Rashid, if you would like to ask. Yes, I mean, if, uh, if you look at that verse specifically, I mean, when it says, وَلَقَدَ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْإِنسِ That it's saying, yes, we brought forth many uh, people from um, many from among the peoples who are going to hell that it doesn't mean that god brought them you know or, or created them for the purpose of going to hell no it says that's why it says later on that they have hearts which they do not understand with so it's saying that these people are that god did give them hearts he did give them eyes he did give them minds to think but they're not using those minds those hearts so for that reason so he uh, he, co- uh, he compares them to cattle not to say that they're exactly like cattle but it's just it's just a metaphorical speech that it, it is being referenced here it's not exactly but it's just saying that the reason why is it's a, it's a more like a statement that the reason why they are going there is because of what they have done that allah did give them these faculties to use but they did not use them in the right way so that's no, the Rashi- the, the verse makes it, the, if you read the verse, even it makes it clear that there's something fundamentally wrong with the heart itself. It's not just based on the action. He says, no. God God himself curses your heart and hardens your heart. That's not the him, verse. Free to no. this one I mean, there are, but I mean, that's the verse he read. I was just commenting on that verse. This one coming in from but, Sheikh Spear says, Perfect Dawa, do you interpret the Quran in Arabic or English? If in English, how can you be sure it's an accurate translation? And why in English, if in Arabic, it makes more sense? Um, actually, uh, I, is, I do uh, 
from Arabic as well, um, and I um, and English as well. I even checked the Persian. I checked different um, interpretation and different um, you know translation. <clears throat> and if uh, <clears throat> sometimes if I there are verses that I <clears throat> I'm not so sure about uh, understanding of them, so I ask those who are uh, better uh, than me. And sometimes even <clears throat> Brother Rashid knows I uh, contact him. And there are uh, there is another brother <clears throat> who speak Arabic, and uh, we discuss certain verses, and um, we uh, come to to the conclusion. And uh, yes, is based on their reading are the <clears throat> verses in the Quran that tells you to cut the hands of the thieves, or no? Okay, or all right. If you, if you want, no, just uh, yes or no. Sorry, what? Once again, are, just say so. No, based on your understanding, are there verses? Are, are, is there a verse in the Quran that tells you that in a, the person who steals, you have to cut their hands? Yes I, or no? Ab absolutely not. Okay, oh absolutely not. Okay, uh, if you want, I can I can prove you. If you want, I can prove you okay. right. Well, maybe no, we can have a stream later. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Because if you want, I can prove you. No, no, no. I Absolutely. think Tijan is going to kill, murder, murder us if he continues. <laughs> sorry, Tijan. Sorry, sorry, Tom. <laughs> you don't have you. Only have a couple more questions left, and then we'll get you guys out of here. Thank you guys for being. It's been almost two hours already. He says, if Scot Scotus, the Supreme Court of the United States, makes Christian Sharia legal, will it be just as bad as Islam Sharia? I guess that assumes that you think that Islam Sharia would be bad for the Muslims. Uh, I am, what are your thoughts? Would it be? We'll let both sides speak. Um. I'm, good. I'm just, I don't know, I think Islam in power is more dangerous than Christianity in power. However, I think right now in the, in the world that we're living, uh, because Christianity is in the position to affect uh, the world's superpower, um, it potentially could cause, even though inherently Islam is more da damaging, um, in effect, Christianity is having more of a global influence and could be causing a lot more harm. So, for example, just the idea of how Christians see climate effects of climate change, the fact that it changes their view on climate change is affecting the world globally. Um, I can't I can't imagine religion having a positive effect on that view, or Christianity affecting people's um, you know global politics and their far, United States foreign policy, the way people vote on that. So, the fact that what the United States does changes everything in the world, I think the negative uh, effects of Christianity might be f uh, felt by more people because countries that are Islamic um, have less access to economic resources and can change the world less than countries that are Christian right now. You got it. This one coming in from Rocky Shepard says, is it okay to marry a six-year-old and consummate it, Rashid or Dawa? I think you guys kind of already answered that, but... We have know. answered that. Yes, we have answered that. I think we don't need to answer again. <clears throat> this one coming okay. in from Luigi Santoriello says, if all Muslims were peaceful and honorable like Muji and Rashid, this would be a way better world. I don't know if that's a compliment or a backhanded compliment thank you thank you we uh, we, we, we yeah, hope that you. we hope that everybody become we, we try well, i'm trying yeah I'm trying i think mo most muslims are better than islam and most christians are better than christianity and most hindus are better than hinduism and the vast majority of jews are better than judaism so this is um uh, good. The good thing is that religion has not been able to successfully rob people's humanity. So that's a failure of religion, and you know, one point for humanity. This one I just, in from. Uh, yeah, I just say fast uh, that uh, that's why I have this my channel, the Perfect Dawa. That uh, I'm trying to change them, the uh, people. Yes. <laughs> Ophel Ian says, if anyone yeah. Muslim can what? decide. What Sorry, if, and, and, and an atheist republic, we're trying to get them away from religion. So check that out as well. My channel, <laughs> atheist republic. Okay, but sorry, go on. No worries. Sorry, this, James. This one from Ovel Ian says, if anyone Muslim can decide whether a hadith is correct or not, doesn't that promote Islamists to believe what is violent and act on that? Do they have to do that? I mean, do they have the right to do that? Sure. I mean, you have the right to do whatever you want. But then, uh, of course, there will be pushback. I mean, uh, um, there, there will be people who will combat that. At the end of the day, I mean, I guess that can be said about anything. You have the right to to, to say whatever you want. So they have the right, yes. Um, but does that mean that it is true? That can be debated. I mean, we can go into discussions about whether that is true or not. But they, they have the right to say whatever they want. 
You got it. And this one coming in from Darth Revan says, last one. Can you ask the Muslim side, if Islam is so peaceful, why did Muhammad die in a military raid on a village to the woman whose family he had just slaughtered? <laughs> I, I, he, this is also another fabricated um, hadith uh, as well. Okay, that's uh, what I can say right away. I thought he would die from poisoning. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 there are many stories out there, but uh, uh, this one is uh, is quite uh, funny, even to me. Um, Which one but, is it true? And the poisoning one is true? <laughs> uh, according to you guys? Uh, there has, yeah. hasn't been such a thing. I we don't care. I mean, it, whether he died by poison or he died uh, by someone killing, there were prophets who were killed before him. So that comes as in, it doesn't uh, make his prophethood, you know, non valid just because he was killed. You know, there were prophets who were killed before him. So, and we believe that that's in the Quran. I mean, but also testify to that. But so, wasn't that, wasn't I mean, he poisoned by one of the women that he had murdered his family? No, so she was trying to get no. revenge. No, not that part. No, 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 not at all. This one, actually, that's what we. In terms of, uh, I want to get you guys out of here within two hours. So, I want to say thank you to our guests. We really do appreciate them. They're linked in the description, folks. If you want to hear more from them, if you want to learn their views, you certainly can by clicking on their links below. That includes at the podcast. So one last time, I'm going to do a quick post-credits show at the very end. So stick around for that. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Rashid, Perfect Dawa, T-Jump, and Armin. It's been a true pleasure to have you. Just, uh, I would like to say uh, fast something. Armin, if you would like, I can continue about hand chopping. If you would like, you can come to my channel right now. I will go there. Uh, come to my you... channel, Atheist Republic. But you are going live, live right now? Because I'm going oh, live right now. Oh, no. Oh, no, okay. I can't do it right now. But maybe later, yes. maybe later. Okay, later. But right now I'm going live. For those who would like to ask, um, I will be live. Uh, By the way, just to be clear, in, on Atheist Republic, we just don't, we don't do just Islam. Like we are like against, we stand against every religion. Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, like we cover them all, Zoroastrianism. So um, right now we're doing a lot on Hinduism, so. If you'd like to, yes, I would also, check I would also uh, like to say that uh, um, I would like to uh, co converse with you, I mean, if it's possible, um, yeah. you know, be, uh, on the different verses that you put, because there was no time. Uh, so I could Rashid, not... was I rude to you? Yeah. I'm sorry I interrupted you as a couple of times. Do you think I was rude to you at any point? Like I tried to, like, oh, no, sometimes... No, 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 okay. I mean, that's what happens in a debate. I mean, uh, okay, I, okay. I, I, I frankly prefer just... To, to dialogue and then you, you have time you ask me a question and get, and allow me to speak and answer the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, I should have I should have been more mindful. But you seem like a very nice guy. Like I hope you do, I didn't I make like you to, upset. Like to, no, no, I would like to uh, continue this discussion and then you can ask me about any verse that okay. is has violence and I would have. Let's do that. You would you come to, would you come to my channel? Would you come to my channel? Yeah. Anna, no, okay. Yes. Let's um, do it. Contact me. I would very much appreciate that. I would love to. I would love to have you there. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. I will be live right now. So I say goodbye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye, Thank you, you got it. Thanks very Bye. much, gentlemen. I'll be back in a moment, folks, for a show, short post credit scene letting you know about upcoming debates. So stick around and hit like in the meantime.
and gentlemen, want to say thanks so much for all of your support. Very fun debate. And again, our guests are linked in the description if you'd like to hear more. Ultra, thanks for your last minute super chat. So we do appreciate you. Thank you very much for your support, whether it be in the form of. There are a lot of different ways you guys support the channel, and it means more than you guys know. Let's see. What is this? I think this is, they're trying to address the chat. They say, if you see this, then you know, what is it? You know atheism is better than God. So they're trying to punk you in the chat if you want to debate them. The, what is uh, their name? Ultra is there in the live chat if you want to debate them. That's what they say to you. So I want to say, though, thanks so much for all of your guys' support. Seriously, it means more than you know. Thank you guys, not just Super Chats, like Super Chats, that helps, it's true, but otherwise, even standard questions for the Q&A, that helps as well. And, I mean, questions overall, just period, that helps because if there were no questions, we couldn't even have a Q&A, period. But other things that help, like, yeah, we just hit 180 likes, that's actually very good for a live stream for us, so we really do appreciate that. 180 is great, so we can totally, we can totally hit the goal of hitting 190. We've got 195 viewers right now, so I have no doubt in my mind we could hit that goal of 190. It means more than you guys know. We really do appreciate your guys' support through that, as that does help boost the, every particular debate that we host has a higher probability of being recommended by YouTube if you hit like. So if you thought that your side was more persuasive in this debate, hitting like is actually going to make it more likely that more people see it. But if you don't think your side did that well and you thought maybe that they weren't as persuasive as you hoped they would be well then frankly like you probably wouldn't want to hit like because in that case you'd actually be kind of recommending a video to people on youtube where you thought your side lost but want to say though we really do appreciate you guys thanks for all of your support here's another way is that I see you there in the old live chat. Let me, uh, before I tell you more ways, I want to say hello to you in the live chat. Trinity, Trinity Matrix, Doorknob Head, Clinton Roche, Felix, and Hot Single Plague Doctor in your area. Jeremy Nolan as well. And Alika, is that, am I saying it right? Let me know. My, my eyes are, let me see, let me zoom here. Alika, as well as Ultra, and El Hakim B. Amir Allah, let me know if I'm saying it right. Al Solmo, good to see you again. General Balzac, thanks for your support. And whew, Emery Demir, good to see you again, says, toss my salad. Nasty guy. This one coming in from, do appreciate your support. Sideshow Nav, our head moderator, th thanks for all you do. And Rock E. Shepard, good to see you. Seb Oz, thanks for coming by, says, what's the music name? It's in the description box. It's World Goes Wild. I can't remember who it is, but the band name is in the description box as well. Coded, uh, code blooded 2000. Thanks for coming by. Good to see you there in the old live chat. Crazy Goat, happy to have you here, as well as Shave Safta. Thanks for being with us, as well as Wasim. Glad to have you here. And Slam RN, good to see you again. Long time viewer. Susanna, glad to have you with us. I see you there in the old live chat, as well as Point Fire and Mike. Glad to have you here. Adam Farrow, happy to have you with us. And Ophal Ian, thanks for dropping in. Cool Servant Jesus Swag, glad to have you here. De Freak and Gassem, thanks for being with us. Jen Wallace, happy to have you here, as well as Ali. And Ronald Mendonca, good to see you again. Azri Schizophrenia, happy to have you here. And yeah, I gotta say though, it even helps when you guys hit the subscribe button, that even helps as well. Here's how. It's just social credibility. So it basically shows people that when they see a channel with a lot of subscribers, it's like when they see a lot of Amazon reviews, if you're subscribing to something that kind of people say like, oh, it's like a lot of people must like that. So really, if you're subscribed, that helps the channel well uh, as well. And there are, so there are a lot of ways you can help the sports channel and you guys do a fantastic job of that. So I wanna say thank you for that. Here's another one. If you know of friends, here's a more direct way. If you're like, man, I really thought my side was more persuasive in this debate. We already passed 190 likes, by the way. We're only seven likes away from 200 to, for being in the hundreds of likes during the live stream. So I highly encourage you, hey, hey, we're only seven away. We can smash that goal and have literally hundreds of likes on the live stream itself. Want to say, my dear friends, Think about this. If you really thought that your side was most persuasive in this debate, you'd want to share this debate because maybe you're thinking, hey, maybe there are people on the fence and it's good for them to hear both sides because if they hear both sides and the side that you think won, won, 
and they see that, well, then they'd probably be persuaded that way because it's not like you're sending them a one-sided video. They'd be seeing a debate in which they're kind of like, oh, I got to be honest. Have to be honest, I think that this side did win. If you didn't think your side won, I would not recommend, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, you know, it depends on what your view is. You may not be as compelled to share the debate, to hit that share button below and share it with somebody else because you might be thinking like, I don't know if my side did very well. Maybe they didn't get enough prep, whatever it was. Just something to keep in mind. But that depends. I've got to tell you, we want to say word of mouth really does make a difference. For real. That classic, old-fashioned, like third party willing to say, hey, so-and-so, I think you might enjoy this debate. It's pretty good. That really does go a long way. Because if I go on Twitter, for example, and I tweet out like, hey, we're going to have this debate. It's going to be awesome. It's on whether or not Islam is violent. People will be like, well, yeah, of course, James. You you know, of course say that it's going to be cool because like you host Modern Day Debate, you run the show. But if you say that, well, it's a lot more, frankly, it's a lot more convincing because you're a little bit more credible. You're a third party. Want to say, though, we want to pre- we want to say we appreciate you very much. You guys, thank you for your support in all of these different ways. I'm trying to think of what else. Those are really the main ways, and we really do appreciate that. If you listen to the podcast, here's one. If you really want to go the extra mile. Maybe you're like, man, James, I feel like doing a good deed today. I've got energy and I'm excited. Is if you give us a positive review on our podcast, that really helps for real. No joke. We have a podcast and it's available on fine podcast apps everywhere. So Spotify, for example, or Apple Podcasts, Modern Day Debate. Let me check in right now because I just want to see how many reviews we have. As, as I always get a kick out of checking this out is that we have 89 ratings. And wow, I'm actually like pleasantly surprised at how many stars it has. It's got, out of five stars, we have 4.5 stars. So thank you. Like that's like super supportive. I'm, I'm just encouraged by that. I'm like, wow, that's like really good. Like I, I thought it would have been lower to be honest. I thought it would have been like three or four stars to be honest, because hey, we've got a lot of growth to do. We've got a lot of things to improve. I'll be honest. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that we don't, but we're going to work on it and we're going to get better. And I'm just super encouraged that people are already giving such positive reviews. So on your favorite podcast app, if you type in modern day debate and you find us and you say, Hey, I am going to not only subscribe and Hey, I, like it's convenient because let's say you run out of data and you're like, man, I ran out of data or you just want to save your data. Let's say you don't have unlimited data like me i don't have unlimited or if you're like well i have unlimited but maybe you travel through a tunnel while you're going to work on a commute through the subway whatever it is and you don't want to have to rely on your data because if you're going through a tunnel you're probably going to lose connection you can download the debates we're at 198 likes you guys that's monstrous we're only two likes away from being at the hundreds mark for live stream likes during this debate which is fantastic that's actually great and so hey it's true if you download modern day debates you can listen to them anytime and it's ad free that's one cool thing is that i've got to be honest uh, on youtube our debates usually have like an ad maybe like every 12 to 15 minutes that's like the average there are no ads in the podcast at all so it's fully ad free it's been that way for the last two years that we've had it. It's going to be that way for a while, to be honest. Like maybe down the road we'll do it if we want to fund like more in-person debates, which we do want to eventually do more of. But it's going to be a while before we ever put ads in those. So highly encourage you check it out if you haven't. And like I said, maybe you're already like, yeah, I've, I've already checked it out. If you leave a review, that really does go a long way in terms of helping our podcast. So for real, I, I'm encouraged too that the podcast is growing some t- so much right now. That sometimes we even get people, holy smokes, we have 200 likes, you guys. That's phenomenal, 200. So we're literally in the hundreds of likes for this live stream. So that's huge. Thank you guys for that support. But yeah, like I said, we actually sometimes have people stop in the live chat on YouTube. And they're like, oh, James, I like I actually I didn't find you on YouTube. I, I found you through the podcast first. And then I, like, I was listening on the podcast and I realized you guys are on YouTube and then that's how, you know, I came over there. So appreciate that support, though. You guys were pumped about that. The Freak, I see you there in the old live chat. Good to have you with us. Joseph Tim Merriman, thanks for coming by. Appreciate you being here with us. And let's see here. Is anybody new that I hadn't said hello to? Thanks for your kind words. Mike says, I love this channel. We appreciate that. And yeah, we 201 likes. And Emery Demir says, I will make it 201. And then Sheik 
Spear, let me know if I pronounced it right, said uh, 201st like, lol. Now we're up to 203. Seriously, thank you guys. Seriously, it really does mean a lot. Because I appreciate that you guys actually do that. It really does. Our videos getting recommended more means more people are going to actually subscribe. Because we're not ashamed about the fact that we want to grow. We're not ashamed of that. Because we think we're having a positive influence. That There's a purpose behind Modern Day Debate. And that purpose resonates with all of our values. Whether we be atheist, Christian, Muslim, you name it. Everybody wants a fair platform. Everybody wants a level playing field so that people from all walks of life can come on and make their case. No matter how controversial their views are, including. Now I've got to say... That's one of our values, and we're glad that we share that value no matter what walk of life we are from, and we want to stay true to our values, and so we appreciate you guys supporting us as we strive to, like I said, build those bridges or provide this level playing field so that everybody can make their case on this neutral platform. That's important to us, and we really do appreciate it, though. We're excited about the future. I've got to tell you, we have big things planned, so thank you guys for all of your support. It means more than you know. And seeing more new people in the live chat, NWO Games Alert. Thanks for coming by. I see you there in the old live chat, as well as, I saw another new one. Oh, that's what it was. It's uh, Ultra G. Glad to have you. Oh, that's what it was. It's not Ultra. It's Ultra G. Thanks for letting I see you there in the live chat. And then another one was Best in Show. Thanks for being with us. I see you there. YouTube War on Conservatives. Thanks for being with us. Kiwi in Springfield. Thanks for your kind words. It says, we love you, James. You and Alpha. I appreciate that. Amazing. Thanks for your support. But yeah, thanks, guys. You guys make this fun. We're excited about the future. Thanks for all of your support. You guys help more than you know. It really does mean a lot. Bashan Mori. Thanks for coming by. It says, hey. Hey back, my friend. We're glad you're here. Thanks for hanging with us. This is a lot of fun, you guys. I'm excited as we have more debates. This Thursday, we're going to have this debate that we've been for weeks trying to set it up on whether or not dinosaurs ever coexisted with man. A juicy one, a fun one. It would Some would say out there, it's going to be a fun one. I enjoy those debates. Those are, I think it's like a fun topic. It's something like fresh and changes it up. So it's not just politics and religion debates all the time. Those science debates are a lot of fun. And so I want to say thanks, guys. Stick around for those future debates as they are coming up quick. And want to say thanks again for all of your support, guys. Love it. Appreciate it. It means more than you know. Thanks, Kiwi in Springfield. Says, you to man. See you on Twitter, brother. You better believe it. That's right. We are on Twitter, folks. If you happen to say hello on Twitter, Modern Day Debate is on there as well. We've got our social media links in the description. But thank you guys for supporting us as we strive to provide a neutral platform so that everybody can make their case on a level playing field as we discuss the big questions of life. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time, folks. Let's farm. Are you there in the old live chat? I hope you're doing well. I didn't see you there. Where are you? Let me type this in. Is it Let's Fair? General Balzac says, give a shout out for Let's Fair. I think you meant Let's Farm, but both Let's Fair and Let's Farm, we hope you're doing well. Thanks for all you do in the old Discord community for Modern Day Debate, Let's Farm. And Brooke Sparrow, thanks for what you do in the Twitch community. We appreciate that. That means a lot. And thank you guys for your sort as your support as well as Muhammad. Thanks for coming by. I see you there in the old live chat. Glad you were with us and excited to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for your support. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your weekend.